All right, what is going on, everyone? Sorry, I'm a, a couple minutes late. Uh, I was, I, if you've seen like my hats and things I have over here, I do like triathlon stuff, and I was on my bike and I went a little longer than I than I was uh, planning to. Let me know if you can if you can hear me, uh, and um, and I'll, I'll get right into it. So we've got what if you haven't watched one of these before. What I like to do is I I've got the heritage auction uh, that that goes on every Sunday and Monday. And I think it's just kind of fun to kind of watch it and see some of those books come up this week. There are some crazy books coming up for sale. It is it's a really surprising uh, like weekly auction. I mean, a lot of times they have big books at heritage on the weekly auction, but this is an exception. There are a lot of really big ones, but we've got about 10 minutes, you know, before that gets started. So I thought I would just first uh, go over a couple of the books that I picked up recently since the last time I did the stream, which has been a little bit. Um, but uh, I've got some raws over here as well as some some graded books. So just some of the cool. I, I picked out a few of the big ones. I've been buying a lot of stuff lately because I've been selling. I've been selling quite a bit, and so that gives me the opportunity to buy stuff. I generally use the the comic money. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, oh, what up, you dirty fluffers? I see that on there. So so yeah, I mean, I sell stuff, so I buy stuff. Um, but the first one. Uh, on here, this one was pretty cool. This was Captain Battle, number three, uh, which has just got this pretty crazy cover. You know, the woman that's going to get crushed by the spikes. Uh, this is potentially a Rockford pedigree copy because it's got this. Let's see if it comes up on the camera. This little S, that stamp that's on the B, that's one of the signs that is uh, typically with the Rockford pedigree. And so I'm going to try to get that one graded. See if I can get the pedigree. We'll see. Uh, then we've got. This one that I've never owned a copy of this before. Uh, this first Kid Flash, Flash 110. Uh, I picked this one up from Superworld Comics. I think that's who I got this one from. Um, but yeah, pretty nice presenting copy. I can't remember exactly. I think there's like a stain. Yeah, if it comes through, you can see kind of like there's an outline of a stain right there on the Flash. But otherwise, a, a pretty solid presenting copy of that book. Um, I, I like picking up DC books when I can. This one, this is an awesome one. I'm definitely getting this graded. If you watched my... Uh, my CGC unboxing video that came out today, I had uh, Astonishing number 30 on there, um, which is that crazy cover with the eyeballs like that are melting the guy on the cover. Uh, so this is uh, from Atlas as well. This is Astonishing number eight. This is one of this is another big book from that run. And it was pretty happy to pick this one up. This one has a lot of you know pretty awesome elements on the cover there. And uh, yes, this is a Russ Heath cover. Um, but yeah, you've got the the claw kind of pushing the guy under there, the skeletons in the back. Um, so yeah, and the black backgrounds. Um, I was the I really like the pre-code horror books that have the, the black backgrounds. I think those always really pop, look really cool. Uh, so and then I also picked up a few graded books and uh, a couple of them that uh, are on my like at least one, like I said, that's on my keeper list, and that's that's this one right here, which is Spirit number twenty-two. And if you've never seen this this one before, this is kind of like the golden age, like femme fatale cover. Uh, this was done by Will Eisner. It just got this amazing like gradient background where it's the purple to the to the blue, and uh, you know the woman in the red dress. But this time she's not, you know, she's not in trouble. She's actually looking like she's going to cause some trouble on this cover. So, uh, so yeah. So that's uh, one of the that's the keeper book, the definite keeper book that I picked up. Uh, then we've got this one here, which is Blue Beetle number 54, which um, you can see here, it's a classic good girl, girl cover used in Sodi or Seduction of the Innocent. Um, so this is the biggest book from this run. Uh, fr well, from this segment of the run. I mean, you can go real early into Blue Beetle, but uh, this segment of the run. And so this is a cool one to be able to pick up and actually being able to, to get both of those books effectively from New York Comic Con, because I didn't go there, but Elite Comics 11, if you talk about I talk about like where I get some of these books sometimes and uh, on Instagram, elite comics 11 is one of the, the great sellers on Instagram or they're like an intermediary for sellers. And so there was a, uh, one of the, the booths at New York comic con was called inner geek Ashland. I think they're from Ashland, Kentucky, and they were selling uh, there and they had those two books and I was able to put a package deal together for them. And then last one I thought I'd talk about that I picked up was this, uh, Crime Suspense Stories number 20. Uh, this is an upgrade to my 5.5. Five. I've already I've, I've let the 5.5 five go now. So now I've got the 6.0 here. And this one, I'm going to attempt to see if it can get a higher grade. 
The thing that makes me a little nervous after seeing some recent grading from CGC is that the thing that's holding this one back is some, some tanning on this cover. And it seems like CGC is hitting tanning really, really hard right now. And that that's a concern to me. I, I mean, I don't want to send this in and end up coming back with like a four or five. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I, I made a post. What was it yesterday or the day before about a crime suspense stories number 22 that's up tonight. And it is a beautiful copy of that book. That book is a six, six, five. I mean, it, there's no question that book is a six, six, five. And from CGC, they gave it a four or five. And so that one's definitely a, uh, and, and it's just, it seems like it's tanning that really hit it. And so that makes me nervous <laughs> on that book. This one is definitely cleaner than that one in terms of like, kind of like edge wear and that kind of thing. But I don't know. That one makes me really nervous. It also makes me really nervous for my crime suspense stories 22 that's at CGC right now, uh, because I think that one that's up tonight is cleaner on average than mine. Um, but has a similar amount of tanning. And so that makes me really worried about what mine's going to come back as. I don't know if maybe somebody just had a bad day that day or or uh, or what, but um, uh, but let's see. So what do we got here? Uh, so uh, Mickey, thanks for joining the stream. What comics am I bidding on tonight? Well, I mean, one of the things that's good for me about doing these streams is it makes it really hard for me to bid on stuff. So saves me some money <laughs> on, the, on, these, on these days. Uh, and, uh, it's possible. I may bid on some stuff. I've got my, you know, my little like list of books that I'm interested in this week and I've, I'll be having the, the auction running. Um, there's another amazing fantasy 15 up tonight. I, I mean, I've been talking about that. It's, it's crazy. I mean, so with amazing fantasy 15, one of the things I I've talked about almost this whole year was how that book just spiked. And I was telling people, I'm like, don't buy into that FOMO on that book. It just, it's not a sustainable move. And that thing is going to come down like everything else. And what happened was it went so high that it reaches a point where people are like, yeah, I'll sell my book for that, <laughs> you know? And so we've been seeing so many copies of Amazing Fantasy 15 sell. Like I I've talked about this on the channel. I used to see maybe one come up on Heritage every like six to eight weeks, probably maybe even less than that. I see one literally every week, at least one. I've seen as many as three on their weekly auctions, which is just it's an unsustainable number of them for the demand. You know, when you've got these books that sell for 20, 30, 40, 50,000, there's only so many people out there uh, that can can uh, uh, spend that much money on a book week after week after week. And so uh, that is that. Now, one thing, uh, but again, we've got well, a few more minutes before the auction starts. And, uh, and it's a little bit until there's some books that I, I think are, are fun to show. So one of the things I put on my little thumbnail was I wanted to talk about CGC grading because I had some questions about that in, in my grading videos what, where people were asking what I felt about CGC grading right now. And honestly, I think their grading has been fine. I mean, I'm criticizing that Crime Suspense Stories 22, um, but for, for this submission, so I've got some kind of like little notes here. Uh, so I submitted 26 books total in this whole submission. It was 25 in their fast track economy and then one as an express book. And so out of those 26 books, I had 13 that hit my estimate exactly. I had nine that exceeded my estimate, six by just a half grade, three by a full grade. Then I had four books that were below my estimate, three of those by just a half grade and one by one and a half grades. And uh, so, I mean, so then when you, when you break that down, um, I had... 22 of 26 books that were within a half grade plus or minus of my estimate. I mean, that's like what you can't complain about that. To me, that means they are consistent in their grading because I know what I expect from CGC when they're grading the books. And I'm having 22 of 26 hitting my grades. Then I had three getting a full grade uh, higher than my estimate. And so I'm either getting them at what I estimate or higher for 25 of of 26, like within a half grade or a full grade higher of 25 or 26. And then just one book that was lower by more than a half grade. And that was, if you watched, it was the GI Joe number 21. And I'm telling you that book is not a seven. <laughs> like that, that book is not a seven. I like, I'm almost like, if you watch the video, I was talking about a spite book where I submitted a book because I was frustrated that that the person sold it as a higher grade than than what it actually was and so i sent it in just to confirm to myself i almost feel like i might do a spite resubmission for that gi joe 21 because like i mean 
I had it as an eight five, and I'm still very confident that that book is an eight five. I mean, if you saw the X Men sixty four that was in there, um, that one I had estimated an, a seven five to an eight, and it got a nine. There's no way that GI Joe is two full grades worse than that X Men. 64, like just ridiculous. But uh, I, I did have some people commenting about that X-Men 64 because it's one of those things where when we're talking about grading, I think a lot of people struggle with spine ticks. They they see spine ticks and they think that this book is instantly getting just hammered by grades. But spine ticks, the way you really do spine ticks for grading is you just count them. I mean, at least within it's a higher grade book. And so that one, I reviewed that book afterwards because I still felt like it was a little high. Um, and when I, when I counted all the flaws, because now I'm getting to see it after pressing, because I don't see them before pressing. I'm trying to estimate based on what I think pressing can get out. And I counted 16 flaws on that book, which would be like an 8.4, but there is no 8.4. So I'd say it was a strong, solid 8.5. I think the 9.0 is generous. I will gladly take the 9.0, uh, but I don't think it was anything that was really crazy. So uh, when I go back to that one, it's still, it's, it's within range when I, uh, uh, when I look at it post pressing, because that's always the, the the tricky part. You try to estimate what a book is going to be um, after somebody presses it, and so you're you're trying to guess what can get out, all that kind of thing. Um, but uh, I think with that, let's see if we've got the let's see if we've got the heritage auction going yet, because um, we are at seven oh one. Should have started by now, so I've got to get over onto my thing over here. And then we can, uh, I can at least share that screen and then I can start looking at uh, comments and let's see what's going on. All right. And yeah, the auction has started. They're at item number five. Let's see where I'm. Uh, I, the first one that I'm really like interested in looking at is number 15. So we aren't there yet. Um, so let's go in here. So I'm going to bring that screen up. And all right, yeah, that is not split in the way I wanted it to. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, like that. Ah, there we go. All right. Okay, so now you can see uh, we've got the the heritage auction up there, and I'm gonna go back and yeah, thanks everybody for joining the chat. We got 57 people in here, so great to see all these people joining in. I know like, I'm starting at the top. I, I know I started a little late. Like I said, I I was uh, I was busy trying to, I, I had done a bike right before this and I was trying to not like sweat through my clothes and everything like that as I was getting ready for this thing. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so I was last video and grades extraordinarily well, spot on CGC. So yeah, and, and I mean, that's, for me, that is something where it's, it just takes time and practice. You know, that's really what it comes down to. It's seeing, I, I buy a lot of graded books, so I see a lot of graded books and you really start to get a feel for what a book should end up being. And you, you kind of learn that it tends to be the higher grades tend to be a little easier because then you can just count flaws. It's when you get to the mid grades, the lower grades, that it, it becomes a lot more like, what have you seen around that, uh, that, that looks like that? Uh, now you can definitely have one of the ways that I really like to grade books is I like to look at, um, uh, I, I like to look at limiting flaws. So if there's any flaw that's on there, that's significant enough that it's going to hold the grade back from getting above any maximum point. And a really good reference I, I've shown this in prior videos is, uh, he doesn't make videos anymore, but ETA Nick made this like little like cheat card thing. And it's useful for finding those limiting flaws. It's it, it's not something that's great when you're having to deal with multiple flaws in a book, but it gives you it tends to give you a pretty good top end limit on what those books are going to get. Um, all right. Let's see if we've got any any questions in here. Lots of pedigrees in this heritage auction. Yes, yeah, so, I mean this this auction really is astounding from the perspective of the Amazing Spider-Man books. Oh, there's a pretty cool one. It's up there. Uh, so we've got this Adventures into Darkness number six. So yeah, I, I remember seeing uh, the same book. Um, who was it? Uh, Polanski on Instagram. He had a, a really nice copy of this one that he was selling. I was, I kept thinking about buying it from him, but somebody else ended up picking it up before uh, before I got around to it. 
just got myself a flash 110 it was a cgc 40 but the seller sent it in a bubble mailer oh gosh uh so bronzeville did it end up cracking or uh because i had uh, in my very early days of youtube so it had been about two years ago one of my first videos was i bought a batman 42 uh which is that first cover appearance of catwoman on the in the batman title and uh, let's see. Oh, we've got, uh, so there's an Albedo 398 coming up next that I was interested in seeing, uh, but in the Batman title and that one ended up cracking, it, you know, when I got it in the, they sent it in a bubble mailer and it, it ended up cracking. And, uh, so that was, that was frustrating. Like, like it's just, yeah, I never understand. I think there's like, sometimes people think that like the CGC case is actually like the protection for shipping, but that, that really isn't how it is. Uh, so this one's it. 576. Oh, man, that's getting some that's getting some good bids on it because this is a book, Albedo 234, which is first, second, and third appearance of Usagi Yojimbo. Uh, those books had been coming down kind of ever since Netflix announced that they were canceling that animated series. Um, I mean, this still isn't a let's see. So what did it end up going for? Uh, so this one ended up going for 750. I had estimated 675. So you know, kind of a strong sale for that one. But uh, I like this one. This is his his second cover appearance, second full cover appearance. He's on the back cover of of uh, issue number three. Um, but where's this one at right now? Five seventy six. And yeah, like I would normally probably bid on that one right now because <laughs> that's actually a pretty good price for that book. That book got really expensive. Got up to thirteen hundred, but I had it estimated around nine hundred, and right now it's just sitting at at 600. So we'll see if a few more bids come in. Yeah. 550. So it's at 660 now. So if you have, if you're not familiar with heritage, uh, what they have is they have these, uh, they have the bid price, but the bid price isn't really what the book is selling for. The, the book is selling for the bid price plus the 20% buyer's premium. And so that book that sold for what, uh, seven, uh, 720 had a, uh, let's see. It means it had a bid of 600. So it's 600 plus 20%. And so that's the number that's actually reported to, uh, to GPA, to cover price, to go collect those types of sites. They're reporting the bid plus the buyer's premium. So you never really talk about it with respect to the, the bid. Uh, cause a lot of people, they get, they get turned off by that buyer's premium, but from the purpose, from the perspective of a buyer, it doesn't matter. From the perspective of a seller, it should matter. <laughs> if you're a seller, you should be worried that you're giving a seller's premium and a buyer's premium, you know, because then you're you're giving them a lot of money. Now you can negotiate fees, from what I understand, and all that kind of thing, depending on how much you're selling, how big are the books, how big the books are that you're selling, and that. But um, the fees are are a little, in my opinion, a little steep on the heritage one for the the seller. But as the buyer, all you care about is what you're paying at the end, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Let's see if there's any other cool books coming up real soon. All right. So the Amazing Fantasy 15, that one should be coming up in just a couple. And so that one is a that one is a 3-0. I estimated it at 28,000. I think it's currently sitting at like 25, something like that. Um, so so I think that one will be uh, will be interesting to see what it actually uh, what it actually ends up selling for, because like I said, that book, it just, it keeps, it keeps coming up. We get more and more and more of them. And I think at some point they're going to have, they're going to dry up. People are going to, it'll get to a point where people aren't going to want to sell their book for that price. They aren't going to want that, that price that it's going for at auction. Cause if somebody's selling at fixed price, they're generally still probably selling it, you know, listing it pretty high. Um, but the, the auction prices for those, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15s, that's where you're really seeing the price uh, for those. Let's see here. Are there comments we have? So you should show the Blue Beetle uh, cover error. I thought that was interesting. Oh, here's the, the 15. So let's see. So it is at 28.8. So I, I estimated it at 28. We'll see if it goes any higher. I thought this one had a little, the cover was a little faded, but uh, still a decent percent copy. But yeah, 28.8. So I had it at 28,000, went for 28.8. You know, I, I mean, a 3.0 had peaked at 48,000. That was the high sale for that for that book. So it just, it really shows, you know, that one is, it's not down maybe 50% yet, but 
uh, down 20,000, down about 40%, a little more, maybe than 40%. Um, but let's see, I can show that blue beetle cover. Yeah, we're getting into some of these really big, amazing Spider-Man books, but uh, I'll hide this for right now. Uh, so yeah, so this is that. Someone made a comment too about this. So you can see here that the uh, the woman, you know, she's got this like strap going around her back, but then in, in the reflection, but then in the actual picture, it's not there. Somebody made a comment that maybe that was intentional. So that it makes like, you know, the actual person, her back look more revealing and which is possible, or it, it's possible that it could be an artist error. I, I'm assuming it was artist error, but, but yeah, it is possible that they did that intentionally to just kind of like make it uh, like a more provocative cover. Um, let's see here. Yeah, love the horror appreciation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I changed my, if you haven't seen it, I changed my shelf around. So I, I moved all like the horror books up there. I think all of these are on my keeper list. I can't remember if the Gangsters Can't Win is on my keeper list or not, but every other book up there is. Uh, that Weird Tales is the Captain America 74 that I picked up about a month ago, maybe a little more than a month ago. Um, that is now one of my my favorite books in the collection. It's just awesome Red Skull cover. Then there's a there's basically... You've got that suspense comics number eight up there so that one has this like big skull spider guy on there so it's like a spider with a human skull head and then uh like uh that was from i think it was like 1945 44 I remember something like that then you've got this uh startling terror tales over here uh issue 11 that uses the same uh, the same spider but it's like it's a much more violent cover where it's actually got some heads in its web and all this kind of thing. And that was from like 1940 or 53. Yeah, 52, 1952. And so it's like he, he took some of his covers or cover ideas from earlier covers and just basically like ramped up the violence later on. And that was as we were getting close to the Comics Code Authority when a lot of these different publishers were just competing for eyes and they were using that violence to do it. So let's see if we, so the, let's see if, what some of those, uh, Let's see if we had any of the really high grade ones. Because so there was a number nine. So that one should be coming up in like two. There was a nine point, yeah, like there's a bunch of nine point twos, nine O's and nine point two Amazing Spider Man's and, and other books in this auction. Um, so yeah, there's a nine two Amazing Spider Man number nine coming up next, which is first electro. Um, but uh, let's see what it gets to if this one comes to an end. Um, but this is one of the things I like about the heritage auctions. It's just like, it's one at a time. You don't, you get to just kind of take part in each one, you know, one item at a time. So this one's at 8,400 right now. Let's see, what did I have that book at? It seems like a pretty good price. I, I estimated at 10,800. It's high sale was 14,334. Um, so right now that seems like, I mean, for a nine, two of first 10 issues of amazing Spider-Man and a major villain, that's yeah. I think that person got a pretty good deal on that book. Uh, what did it end up going for? So it ended up going for 8,700. So yeah, I mean, that's almost $6,000 less than it's high. And that high might've been a white page copy, something like that. I didn't check that, but still, I think that's, that's a pretty great price for, uh, for that one. All right. So Let's see what other let's see what other comments we have here. Quite a few notable pressers that are using the Bledo method. Oh, the blue LED. Okay, method that can help. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm aware of that. I, I believe you use that method, Valor. I'm personally not a, uh, a fan of it at this point. I'm sure I'll, it'll grow on me at some point uh, once it seems like everybody's doing it, but I'm just... Like the, the, the taking off the covers and the washing them and the using the blue LEDs, I'm just, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, I'm fine with pressing and dry cleaning, you know, it's like, so then why aren't I fine with the other one? But I don't know. It just, I, I don't, it doesn't sit well with me right now yet, but uh, I, I'm sure like if my crime suspense story is 22 that I have as a five, five, six comes back as like a four, I'll be fine with it real quick. <laughs> I'll probably be sending it out or something like that uh, to have somebody do that type of treatment on it. But um but yeah, that's just my my stance on it right now. But um, yeah, Mike, pick me up in a fifteen. Um, so Mike, he's the one that he he made my 
like the, the blue background here. He made my logo and like my heading for, uh, for my channel and everything. So yeah, just, you know, reach out to Mike if, you know, if you want, uh, want some awesome logos, he does, he does awesome work. Um, yeah, less Ryan bidding means more chances for us. It's true. It's true. I, I talk to people about this. Like it's, I mean, I, I like bidding on stuff just to, you know, cause I like, I like getting books at good deals, cool books, that kind of thing. But I, I don't know. I also, I take some joy and and I think it's part of, of bidding in an auction. You know, you get some joy out of like making someone else pay more for a book. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, there, there, there is a little bit of that. Uh, so yeah, yeah, there's definitely more chances if I'm not, if I'm not one of the ones in there actively watching the books right now. Does that sale tonight? No, no, not at all. Um, so that's, I mean, that's one of the things like you'll find. So since I, I, if you're not familiar with the channel or haven't, you know, I don't talk about, I guess, everything that I, that I do with, with heritage in terms of, of bidding and, and my pricing, that kind of things. But, uh, I do talk about it in my, my top 10 videos that I price usually 150 to 200 books per week. And so in this one, in this case, I priced 199 and I use that for my, um, for myself, for, for, for buying books. I also use it to get those metrics that I use to kind of track the com what I view as the, the comic market or a method to track the comic market. And what you'll see is you'll have it just it depends who's interested in any given book, any given type of book. You can have weeks when Amazing Spider-Man is weak, weeks when X-Men is weak, weeks when they're strong. Um, I, I don't see it as really setting a tone uh, one way or the other. Sometimes certain books just go for great deals. Sometimes they don't. And, uh, you know, but that's why I watch so many books, because you can't really look at, at one book in a vacuum and and uh, think that that means that the prices are going to be low or high for that for that auction. Um, you really have to look at, you, you really do need to look at a lot of books. You try to get as many as possible to, to get rid of that noise, those high and low uh, prices. And it's possible that, you know, like I said, there's some big books this week. And so I, I kind of wonder if maybe some people are either hold, you could have people that are holding off, you know, for certain books that they're interested in. You know, you don't see nine, two, nine, four Silver Age, Amazing Spider-Man come up all that often. And, and there are a number of them in in this auction uh, but let me take a quick drink uh, but yeah eggplant comics definitely looking for an af15 soon yeah so i've talked about that too because i think now is probably one of the better times to really be looking i, I know everybody is concerned about the economy and all that kind of thing i mean it's possible things could get worse next year prices could go down more um but you also will probably reach a point where if somebody has or owns an AF-15, their need to sell it may not be there. You know, it's like if somebody is already financially set and they have, you know, like in one of these expensive books, they may not really care if the economy goes down for a few months or whatever it is. And so they're not going to be the ones that are going to be necessarily dumping those books. They're just going to go, I'm not selling it now while the prices are low. And so that's why I do think that eventually you'll probably have those, those books dry up a little bit. And you won't see them as much. Oh yeah, so here's another one. Here's this uh, Amazing Spider-Man 20 for Scorpion and a 9-2. What did I have that one as? Um, I estimated it at 6,750. And I can tell right now this is going to go low. Like there's there's hardly any action on this book. Um, so I think this one's going to go for yeah, 4,560. Wow. Yeah, that... That's one I would have bid on. <laughs> that hundred percent. That's a book I would have bid on. That was, I think that was a a steal for that book. Um, it was off white pages, but like I said, page quality, yeah, you know, not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, the high for that book had been seven thousand eight hundred. So that was a that was a pretty substantial discount for that book. Um, I, I think you know if people are looking for high grade Silver Age, Amazing Spider Man, or some other uh, runs tonight. I'd be watching because you, you might find some deals in there right now. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'll be sure to ask questions in the chat to keep you distracted when books I come up, I, I want to mid come up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fine. You know, uh, like I said, I, I, uh, so I, I, uh, I buy books when I sell books and, Last month and like the first half of this month, I my selling was was really strong. The last week or so, it's been a little weaker, and so 
uh, I'm less likely to want to really to bid on stuff right now. Also, I have uh, some pretty large CGC bills <laughs> that just came in. So I had that submission, um, but now I, I have 63 books that just got there last week. And so if you're not familiar with CGC, they charge you like the instant they open the package. And so I got all those, those charges right away. So I've got uh, a large CGC bill that I also have to pay. So I got to be a little cautious with my, uh, with my bidding right now. Um, so 25. So I think this is a 9.0, but there was also a 9.2 right before this one. The 9.2 go for. 9.2 went for 1,560. I had that one at 1,500. So basically that one went, you know, that one went right around where I expected it to. Oop. So yeah, that one went right around where I expected it to. So so no big deal there. Um, so yeah, that, that's why I said like when you see deals like like that Amazing Spider-Man 20, that one was a deal. When you see those kinds of deals, you, you need to take advantage of them because you're not going to see a 9-2 Amazing Spider-Man 20 come up very often. And to see one come up for over 3,000 below its recent high, like, <laughs> I mean, that that's a, that's a good book to get. And I mean, yeah, like a nine, two amazing Spider-Man 20, like that's probably not a book that's going to be super impacted by speculation by that kind of thing. But I do think that we're getting that character again, like actually in the Scorpion costume at some point, um, but uh, not yet. So let's see, because we've had the character actually show up. We just haven't had him in his costume. Uh I'm not sure what that question is. No to an amazing fantasy 15. I mean, I would take an amazing fantasy 15, <laughs> but uh, um, I think it would be a cool book to own, but um, I mean, I don't have the budget for an amazing fantasy 15 at the moment. So, uh, so yes, no for me to, to getting one. Um, do you collect original art from, uh, no, I, I don't collect any original art. That's, that's not really a area that I'm really in or familiar with. Like, I talked about this in, in one of the prior streams. I think it was the the stream that I did during Heritage, the last signature auction that Heritage did because that's one of those auctions where you see a lot of original art come up. Um, this one, I don't know why this one was going so high. This one was at 840 bucks. It's a raw 31 and a 5.5. I mean, it looks nice. And another bid got thrown in. I I don't, that one I don't get. I had that one valued around 500 bucks because it's raw too, you know, like that book just sold for almost $900. Like that was a huge sale for that book. Uh, I, I'm guessing someone thinks they can do better than a five, five with it and maybe, but that that's one of those things. Like I've talked about this too on, on, on these, and this is why I don't tend to buy many raw books on heritage auctions. Now, if you buy those lots, they sell like lots of books where you'll have like multiple books in one, you can sometimes get some deals, but I tend to find a lot of the time the raw books sell for like graded price. And I mean, you're taking a risk there. There could be restoration. Like I've talked about that before. I've bought books from heritage that where they, they missed restoration before you could have that you'd have the book, not get the grade that they say it's going to get, which is also possible. <laughs> and it, you know, like the, uh, the, which one was it? Um, the shock suspense stories 12 that I got back. It's like the heroin cover, uh, that I got back recently. I had bought that one from, from heritage and they graded it as a six O I estimated it as a five O and it got a five, five. And so, yeah, you know, like it's close, you know, within a half grade, like I said, you can't complain about a half grade, but if you're buying a, if you're, if you paid, like I got that one, I felt for a great deal, which is why I picked it up. But if you, we're paying full graded price expecting a six O and then you didn't get one. And then you spend all the money to get it graded too and pressed and all of that. And you don't get that grade. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand paying full blown retail, like full blown graded price for a, for a raw book. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, young people catching on a golden age recently. It's really, yeah, I've had some people say that's partially my fault. <laughs> that, that golden age has been catching on more recently. I don't know how much impact I have on that, but uh, uh, but I mean that's part of why I like to talk about it because, I mean, I think I think the books from that time period are so cool. There's so many great covers. It's just the the history behind it is awesome. The artist behind it is, is just 
I don't know. And so I, I think it's, I think a lot of times they just get, they get missed because people don't see them very often. And the more people see those books and know to even look for something, then, then the, the more attention they're going to get. Yeah. This is a big one. Nine, four, amazing Spider-Man 41 first Rhino. I can't think the last time I've seen a nine, four come up for sale. 6,600. What did I have that one as? Uh, I had it at 6,000. So I think that was a pretty solid sale for that book. So yeah, that one went for 6,600. I had it at 6,000. So that was a strong sale for that book. Um, that is a tough book to get in those types of grades. Um, I have a nine... Oh, I think I have a nine Oh, I have a nine Oh that I picked up on eBay uh, a little while ago, but um, yeah, that is a very difficult book in the, in the nines. So let's see here. Modern is so fast recently at CGC. I mean, CGC in general is, is pretty fast right now. The, the only thing that is really, really slow is non fast track economy and magazines. Um, so if you actually, let's see, I can probably pull up CGC's page and go submit services and fees. Yeah. So CGC has their, their turnaround times here. And so you can see modern is 20 days. Fast track is 10 days. You know, you're only saving 10 days, like two weeks if you do fast track, which maybe that's worth it to you. Maybe it's not, but economy, <laughs> like a look at this. Fast track, 20 days, which is exactly what mine took. Mine took almost exactly 20 days, my fast track economy. But standard is like not standard, but the non fast track is 240 days. And that's business days. So you're looking at like a year to get your book back, books back in economy. And you do you want your books sitting in the humidity and everything else down in Florida for a year after they've been pressed, all that kind of stuff? Like, no way. Like, that, that is the best value in grading right now with the fast track. Paying $15 to drop 240 days to 20 days, I will do that all day long. I will happily pay that $15. Now, the then you've got standard is 15 days, express is five days, and walkthrough is three days. Now, my walkthrough, it got there on the 19th, and it has not moved yet. So so I don't know. Like I'm, I'm hoping like by Monday I'll have some update on that, but... Um, but like my fast track economy, for some reason, that one, it got there the same day is already in the, the grading encapsulation phase. That one moved really quick for whatever reason. Um, but then if you go down to magazines, like modern magazines, 211 days, and then economy, 211 days, <laughs> then standard is 34 days. Walkthrough is two days. So I have three magazines at CGC right now that I sent in the same submission. Uh, I have three copies of Vampirella one that I'm getting graded, which has to go into a, a magazine size slab. Now, again, those also opened on the 19th and they haven't moved yet. And it says two days. So it should have moved by Friday, but you know, we'll see, we'll see by Monday. Um, but so I could have sent standard, but I didn't even want to wait 34 days. You know, that's, if that's business days, that's like one and a half months. I'd rather just get it back in a week. You know, that's just my take on it. And so I paid the, you know, it, well, it's 150 minus 10% because I have the, I have the tier that gives me 10% off grading. So it's $135 versus $85. So I paid an extra 50 bucks per book to get it back in two days or three days or whatever. And, you know, if you look at that compared to economy, <laughs> getting it back like a year faster, I'm, I will gladly do that. And I had somebody that, that, was talking to me recently and they said they had magazines that have been there for over a year. So these estimates may, may be worse than that, you know? And so that's, that's why, like, if you're sending books in really consider how much that time is worth, because to me, I would rather have the books back, especially with like, I know some people have concerns with if the, if you press a book, if the pressing on gets undone over time, especially in humidity and that kind of thing. So uh, I really, honestly, I haven't seen that with any of my, my books. Uh, I've never really seen that reversion or whatever people want to call it for, for pressing, but, um, but yeah. So let's see. Yeah. There's, I mean, there are a ton of Spider-Man books. 
I think it doesn't even get out of Spider-Man until item the, the, the last item on my list that I was watching that was amazing. Spider-Man is one seven one five three. So 153 items tonight that are all amazing Spider-Man something. And so that last one that I have on here is the amazing Spider-Man four, but a modern one, it's the uh, Ramos variant. And there's a nine, eight, I think it's signed too, but I mean, like right now they're on what item 74. So they still have another 80 items to go <laughs> before they even get out of Spider-Man. We'll see how, how late I stay on tonight. I mean, if people are asking questions and all that, I'm, I'm happy to stay on, you know, a long time. I love talking about this stuff. And I have a couple boxes over here I can open too. If, you know, if, if, if it's like slow for, for questions or for, uh, um, for what books are coming up, I have a couple things to open as well. But there are, like I said, there are some really great books that are coming up tonight. Uh, I, I'm a little sad I'm not really bidding on the Amazing Spider-Man stuff because I feel like I've seen a couple deals already. Uh, but uh, but one of the ones I really want to see is, uh, let's see, this one, 17270. Here. Let's make sure I turn off that so I don't accidentally bid on something. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Uh, so this is um, Crime Suspense Stories number... Here, let's, see, let's go here. Crime Suspense Stories number 22, which is one of the most famous pre-code horror covers of all time. And, and I had somebody uh, in a prior video ask, why is this one so popular? Why is this one exploding so much? Or why is there so much demand for it? Now, this one, it has gone up a lot recently, but this is a book that if you look back in time, it just like this book just goes up year after year after year. I, I mean, every year this book goes up. It's one where even if you overpay a little for it, you're going to be fine within a couple of years, probably because the book just keeps going up. But this is the one I talked about on Instagram. And this book graded at a four or five is to me is just insanity. <laughs> like this, this is a stunning copy of this book, especially when you're talking golden age, uh, because when you're talking golden age, they do not grade. And I know this is something people, some people agree with or disagree with whatever I'm telling you, they do not grade golden age the same as they grade like a modern or silver or bronze. They are more lenient. And this book, they were not lenient with at all. This, this is a six, six, five, unless there's something massive going on on the spine. Like I can't, I can't see the spine. I check the graders notes. There's nothing in the graders notes that tells me there's spine splitting. So I have to assume there isn't. Uh, if you see the back cover, back cover is actually pretty nice. There's a little, there is some tanning. There's this, uh, this dust shadow on the side here, but like dust shadows in the golden age do nothing. There are, there are nine eights with pretty substantial dust shadows on them from the golden age that were graded recently. So I don't like, I had uh, a couple of people comment on the Instagram page, uh, Instagram post that I made about this, um, where they were saying that it seems like CGC is grading tanning harder recently and it's possible or, or grading dust shadows harder. And it's maybe they've made some change very recently uh, that is possible, which is what has me nervous because I mean, and, and I know that's, there's like a sticking point with, like the promise collection book sometimes because they people think that maybe they let them get away with stuff on those dust shadows. But I mean, I've seen mile high copies that have dust shadows on the back in their nine eights. So I don't know. I, I mean, I I do not agree with the grading on, on this specific copy, but I think a lot of people don't agree with the grading on this copy. And that's why this book is at $6,900 right now. That is a massive record for this book. That That's like a five, five plus price right now for this book. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if any more bids come in, in in live. And if, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if whoever buys this is like, I'm resubmitting that book or they're going to maybe use the blue LED treatment on it or something like that, because this is a really, really nice copy. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with that one. Um, but uh but no, I am, I'm not going to bid on that one. <laughs> I have, I have my copy at CGC. We'll see how that one should hopefully be back like within a week. I mean, it's walk through. I sent it in with my fantastic four number one, which, which is trimmed, uh, you know, so that, but that one is also on walkthrough. So I should be getting those back hopefully pretty soon. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what those are. Well, nervous. I don't know if I'm excited, nervous to see what those are. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah. I had a modern tier come back quicker than walk through both submitted in the same shipment. I, I remember, um, Brian with Bry's comics. I, <laughs> I had sent in my, like the, my last submission, like a few months ago, I had sent in around the same time, I guess he did. And my, my fast track, uh, modern beat his walkthrough. And, and so, I mean, it's, yeah, it's nuts. It's, uh, it's crazy that, that those get through quicker. Yeah. Love that weird tales in the back. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, I love that book <laughs> that, that one is definitely on my keepers list. It'll be tough to move that one off of it. Uh, cause it's not one that I feel like I get an opportunity to pick up very often. Yeah. This is a cool book too. Uh, this is amazing Spider-Man 66, but a nine, eight, uh, I saw grail keepers keys on Instagram. If you follow him, I think he sold a nine, eight of this one. Um, like last weekend, like in a, in a live sale that he did, he had a nine, eight copy and he sold it for a great price. Uh, cause I think, I think he sold it around like 1800 or 1850 or something like that. So, uh, he sold it for a great price to someone cause that one just went for 2880. So yeah, I, I love that Mysterio cover. I showed that I, I picked up a lower grade copy, like maybe an eight Oh or something like that, uh, recently of that book. But I think that's such an awesome Mysterio cover. All right. Brownsville. It seems that modern grading has been back to a couple of years ago. Not super harsh. Yeah. I mean, I don't submit a lot of modern, but I mean, my last submission that I did uh, had one modern set of modern books. It was like 17 or 18 books. And I was, I was fine with their grading. I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, one thing I I've noticed it seems like that with, with the modern graders, you have to get those books pressed. I mean, you should really do it for almost everything anyway, uh, unless you're worried about something like breaking on the cover, some brittleness, but you, you have to get those books pressed or they seem to, uh, to hit you pretty hard. Had a modern book with a dust shadow come back at a nine four. Yeah. I mean, that's, that seems pretty like reasonable. Like usually dust shadows don't hit books too hard. It does depend how dark it is, all how big it is, all that kind of thing. Hey, here's another nine, eight. This is a nine, eight of that first prowler. Uh, so it's at 4,800 right now. Where did I have that one at? Um, I estimated that one at 8,000. This, I mean, unless it gets some big bids coming in, I think I had it at 8,000. Yeah. Cause it's high sale was 10,800. This one, uh, I mean, right now it's looking, we'll see. I mean, sometimes they get a lot of live bids because you know, people start to realize that the book is is going too cheap. But right now, that's that's sitting low. I mean, that's again, that's like me wanting to bid on, on that book type of price. Um, but people just you see all these little bids; they just keep inching in, and uh, it it could just be two people competing. It could be three people competing. You never really know. Um, but these ones, I don't mind when these ones drag out. The ones that, man, yeah, six thousand. That is a steal for that book. Steal for that book. That, yeah, that's, uh, I think whoever got that um, should, will be pretty happy with that purchase. So have I ever done page whitening? No, no, I've, I've never used any of the techniques that are used for like the blue LEDs or the cleaning or like not the, the uh, washing or anything like that. Or the, uh, what is it? Like the hydrogen peroxide solution, that kind of stuff. I have not done any of that. Um, uh, I'm always reluctant to CPR. I'm always nervous about it too. It, it, you know, it's like, even when I, when I feel pretty confident that it, that it has the potential to get a better grade, I'm still nervous about cracking the book out. Cause there's just, there's always that chance that it comes back lower or it gets damaged. I mean, I've had CGC damaged books of mine before, so that's not an impossible possibility. And that's why just just resubmitting to get a book into a new case always makes me nervous. Like if they do something when they crack the book out that they end up damaging the book, like that's a, that is a very real possibility. And that kind of thing uh, always makes me really nervous as well. All right. Yeah. Hit the like button. Yeah. appreciate it. we got 70 people in here right now. I really, it's love seeing everybody hang out. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to work through the, the comments in here. So if you've got a question, uh, put it in there and I'll, I'll get to it. Eventually I will, uh, I will try to answer everybody's questions. We've got uh, eggplant comics. You can get amazing results once you get it down. Yeah. That's, that's talking about the, uh, uh, the blue light um, and the peroxide. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen I've seen the results of it. I think part of the thing that kind of turns me off on it some is like a lot of times it makes it look too white. You, you know, I feel like I can tell when a book has had that done because you know it's just like you get these like really bright whites and it's just like it doesn't look natural. It's something you you never really see. So even if CGC doesn't mark it as like restored or whatever, just it doesn't end up looking natural when it when it gets that super super white. And uh, go through ETA next videos on grading. Yeah. So when I first got back into kind of like comics and, and getting into grading and, and all of that, he's at, well, I first went to my older brother because my older brother uh, has been buying and selling comics for a pretty long time. And uh, so I talked to him first, but then on YouTube, ETA Nick was the channel that I went to. It, it's unfortunate he doesn't make videos anymore, uh, but he, at least my understanding is he kept his channel up and active. So you can still access all of those videos. Um, but yeah, that is, that is the best resource that I can think of on the internet for grading. He, I mean, cause what he's teaching you is he, cause you can look at things like the overstreet grading and all that, but CGC doesn't grade by overstreet. They grade by CGC, you know, they grade the way CGC grades and he teaches you the way CGC grades. And so that's, what's important if you're submitting and that's really whether people like it or not, that's what, um, that's what has really gotten people to, uh, or that's what's really become the standard for, for, for grading books. You know, when someone buys a book from someone and they say it's a seven, five, what they're expecting is if they send it to CGC, they're going to get a seven, five. I mean, that's really what it is most of the time now. And so it really has become uh, an important part of it. or CBCS. I mean, I I've said this before, CGC and CBCS grade basically the same. There, there are little differences here and there. Uh, but they generally grade the same. Let's see, I've saved 4,500. In your opinion, ASM 129 or ASM 14 for the long term? Obviously, the grades will differ. Swag, can you offer up your opinion as well? I mean, neither of them are bad choices, but honestly, I think 129 probably moves up more consistently. If you, if you look at... Um, now you want to be careful right now because ASM 129 went up a lot and it is definitely in like a correction mode right now where it's, where it's coming back down. And so it's not like I would rush out and buy that book. I would be patient because one of the things with bronze age books is that there are a lot of them out there, you know, even silver age, there's more than you think, you know, like if you're, if you're, if you're seeing, well, like we see with amazing fantasy 15, I mean, the, the biggest key of the silver age. And we are seeing them come out of the woodwork when prices got really high. And so that, that can happen in any of those ages other than kind of the golden age. And it's one of the things I like about the golden age is that it's difficult to have people undercut you when there's only like a hundred copies in existence. And you've got people like me that are like, I'm not selling that book. <laughs> you know, it's like, like that, that beyond 27 that's up there. That's a second. There's, there's like four and a six. Oh, that one's a five, five. But I guarantee you that is the nicest looking copy that exists, at least graded. Uh, and, and so I'm like, I'm not selling that book. <laughs> you know, It's like, I can't get it back. It's impossible. And so, so that's, that's the kind of thing when you're, when you're talking about golden age where you have, you know, people like me or others where they're just like, you're not going to get that book from me because I know I can't get it back. Whereas silver bronze, I can get it back. Uh, you'll, you'll find copies, but, um, you know, with that question, let's, let's pull up GPA. So, um, and I'll show you what I mean. By the prices. So what you'll see with Amazing Spider-Man 14 is actually that it stayed really flat for a long time. And I mean, like de a decade, probably. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at like a 6.0. Now, these, these charts can be a little misleading sometimes because it's going back so far that it's like if you're looking at like a stock chart, it's why they often have them in, in log value because as prices go up higher, the, you know, moving up 10% off a dollar is not the same as moving up 10% off a hundred dollars. You know, one is only moving up 10 cents. The other one is moving up $10. And so if you're just using a linear chart, like what GPA provides, it makes things look really small on the, when it's earlier, it makes it look, you know, really big when it gets later. But 
what you can do is you can actually look at the prices and you, and you look at this and you go like, okay, 2002, $650, 2013, $669, like nothing. It, it hadn't moved in a decade. And then you, you start getting up into, you know, the last like five years. And then you start seeing these big jumps in price. And then you can also see it, it is correcting some. I, I still think that uh, it, Amazing Spider-Man 14 is, I think it's around maybe where it's going to get down to, but it, anything could drop more. You never know for sure. But I, I think it has corrected quite a bit. But then if we go to 129, uh, let's see here. Uh, 129. I think this one actually pretty consistently moved up a little more regularly. Now I'm going to look at a slightly higher grade because it's a, a little more modern book. Um, and so look back here and you're at like 300 to 500. And then by 2012, you're at like 700. So it's up like 50% from there. Now, again, it has accelerated, but this one more consistently you know, it's like 700, 800, 1,000, 1,600, 1,600, 2,200, 2,300, 2,500, 2,300, you know, and then you get the big jump in the comic boom where it doubles. But Amazing Spider-Man 129, I feel like that one consistently grows. Now, you can see this big spike here. What you kind of want to get back to is if you, the way I've been looking at it, and this is the way, of, I don't know if Mickey's still in here or not, but the way he'd been looking at this uh, kind of similarly as well is you kind of draw a trend line and pretend like the comic boom didn't happen. And then you kind of look at like, see where my, my pointer is right here. That's kind of around where I'm looking for that book, you know? And so I'm going to be patient. And if it doesn't actually go down, it might just stay flat and just stay flat until that line gets up to here. And that could be a, a few years out in the future. And so it's either, I think, going to stay kind of flat or it's going to come back down to that line. That's what we've been seeing with a lot of books. And so I would be patient, but I think Amazing Spider-Man 129 is probably the better uh the better buy that's just my opinion though it's your money you get to spend it how you want uh let's see here oh and jk collectibles thank you very much uh the 20 dollars super chat i really appreciate that that's awesome and yeah thanks for thanks for being in the chat uh, so well impressive how heritage has weekly auctions with such high caliber books makes you wonder how they do it with high commission rates I, I don't know, but it's it's week after week. Now, there are certain weeks that are better than others. Uh, I was talking with um, uh, someone on Instagram earlier today, uh, specifically because I was saying how amazing this week's auction was. That like a couple weeks ago, I don't remember if it was ex exactly two weeks or three weeks ago, I remember going through the listings and I'm like, there is nothing. Like, I mean, and it's not nothing. There's still like decent books, but nothing like that really stood out that I was like, I really want to watch something this week. And so I don't know how Heritage decides how to split those books out because you would think they'd want to kind of evenly distribute it because the concern I would have if with all these books that came up this weekly auction with these high caliber books is there's not enough money in this auction right now to, to justify those prices or, or to like hit the prices you'd expect. And that's kind of why I think some of those big like high grade books I mean, we've seen a, a number of them tonight that have that have gone for some pretty good prices. Let's uh, put the auction back up. Um, that have gone for some pretty good prices, and I think that could be part of it. Is that there's there's too much high end. Uh, there, there are too many high end books this week, and I think it's overwhelming the maybe the money that's in the room. And so I would have thought a lot of these books are books that you would expect to see in one of their signature auctions. I mean, you can you can have the occasional nine, two or high grade book like that in, in one of these weeklies, but to just stack them in this, this one, I mean, honestly, it feels like a mistake to me. I, I personally would have pulled them into separate auctions and split them out a little more because I just, I think that they probably had some weaker sales because of it, but that's uh, my opinion. Uh, actually sent out some pre-code horror to my presser, hoping for some good results. Yeah. And so I, I've talked about, uh, so the, the books I just got back, I used um, Gary Kendra with Impressive Comics, but the majority of my books I have sent, and the ones that are there right now, the 63 books I sent, I've used the comic book presser. Uh, they're both great pressers. I, I, I send the majority of mine, obviously, to uh, the comic book presser. He's the one that, I'm, that I prefer to use, but Gary Kendra also has a 
he, he also has a huge backlog. A lot of people that, that, that use him as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so there are some, some great pressers out there. You just, if you're sending golden age books, you just want to make sure your presser is comfortable with golden age books. Um, because one of the challenges with them is just that there's going to be, they're going to run into more situations where it's more brittle or whatever it might be. And you don't want them detaching your cover or, you know, popping staples or, or whatever it might be. So, so yeah, if you're, if you're sending to, uh, you know, those golden age books to a presser, then yeah, just make sure that they're comfortable with them. Yeah. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah. I, uh, I've been trying to, I, I had taken a little bit of a, a slowdown over the last month and a half. I'd put out a little, a few less videos uh, than I had been. Um, I'm, uh, like I said, I was biking right before this. I'm trying to get myself back into my triathlon form. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've, I've been putting a little more dedicated effort into that, which has meant a little less time for for videos. But I'm I'm trying to trying to get these uh, these ones out a little more often. And that's why I like doing these live these live chats too, because uh, it doesn't require me to have to do any video editing, <laughs> which uh, which takes a bunch of time in its own right, uh, you know, to do that video editing. So uh, and then I, I get to. Oh, I'm going to watch the auction anyway, so I get to hang out with people, watch the auction, answer some questions. Um, so really want a nice Tales from the Crypt example for the collection. Yeah, and, and you can get them. So that's that's the, the cool thing with the EC books is that, I don't know if it's every book, but it's got to be almost every book. If it's not every one, they have those file copies. And so if you're not familiar with a file copy, it's basically whether it's the publisher or an editor or somebody, uh, they, they took a copy like, you know, directly from the press or printer and they just put it in a file and they just kept it there forever. And so they, they've got a lot of books that have nine, two, nine, four, nine, six, nine, eight copies. And for the golden age, that's not normal, but for EC it is, uh, there's, there are, I mean, I can, I can show you cause we'll go to, um, let's, let's see what's coming up just so I can, Make sure we're not going to miss out on anything really cool coming up. Uh, let's see. There was an, yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, so we'll go to GPA and let's just look up. Well, let's look up crime suspense stories 22. I'm guessing there are file copies. Usually you can just assume there's going to be a file copy for any EC book. And yeah, so you can see with, with this one, because that's one of the things uh, GPA will label it when it's a file copy. So you, there's a 9.0 file copy and an 8.5 file copy. That's actually pretty low for uh, for a file copy for EC. Um, but yeah, uh, 2,300 back in in uh, 2003 for a 9.0 file copy. Man, I I'm guessing that book today would probably sell for like it might be like 50,000. And so that kind of shows what that book has done. But uh, let's let's pick a different one. Let's do like uh, war against crime number ten, as that's one of their really early ones. I think that's first. Oh, shoot, is it first vault of horror? I can't remember. But yeah, so you can see here, nine eight gains file copy, nine six gains file copy. So, and and then you only get fifteen thousand, and I say only, you know, but it's a nine, eight golden age book, but it's, be, it's because these exist. It's not like it's this, this thing that people aren't used to seeing. People are so used to seeing, um, to seeing these, but, uh, let's take a look at this one. So, yeah, let's see if I can, what is this? Yeah. First vault keeper and first vault of four. That's what it is. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, these, these file copies, they just, it's crazy with um, uh, with those EC books. They're just there's tons of them, and so you can get high grade EC books. Just about every single issue that was published is going to have them. Um, and then, yeah, genuine article comics, modern books are graded more strictly than Silver Age and older. I mean, yeah, just like if, if those modern books were from the silver age, they would be like nine, nine tens. <laughs> I, I feel like every one would be like a nine, nine or a 10. Um, and, and that's sometimes, I know some people say that's part of the problem or what causes confusion is that 
you see these perfect books, these modern books, and they just get nine eights. And then randomly you get one that has like a nine, nine or a 10 for whatever reason you don't, it does, it's not ever really all that clear because the reality is probably most of them should be nine nines. You know, maybe not all of them tens, maybe there's like something at like the cut and on one corner, but I mean, really most of them should probably be nine nines. Um, all right. One pre-code horror on, oh, on pre-code horror, what's a normal grade range you expect to see with slab books? Uh, probably in the threes, you know, like the very good-ish range, you know, three to a, like a good, very good to, to very good plus type range is probably pretty normal. Um, at, at least uh, this is actually something I, I mentioned in one of the videos I talked with, with Como about uh, Drew and um, he uh, he was saying like with with EC books and, and I'm not calling the books garbage like I have I have a number of, of these low grade books, too. But he's like the condition. It's like either garbage or file copy, it, you know, and it's just like really beat up low grade two o something like that or nine eight nine six. And you don't see all that many that are in that five to six range. And so that's why like that, that crime suspense story is 22. That's a four or five. That really should probably be like a six. Oh, uh, that's why that one is, is getting, I think so much attention is that you just don't see those types of books very often. And, uh, so getting them outside of that two O range, three O range is, is pretty rare, uh, for, for all, a lot of this stuff. I mean, cause you got to also think about with pre-code horror, a lot of those, you know, the, probably parents weren't a huge fan of them. And uh, they were also, a lot of them were being destroyed. That was actually, they went through a time period where a lot of those were being burned and thrown in the garbage and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, we got a nine, eight first uh, black cat. What did that one go for? Oh man, I feel like I should have bid on that. <laughs> what did I have that price as? Uh, so I estimated that one at 4,000 because that's a newsstand too. Now it's off white to white and people can be a little more picky when you're getting into this like late bronze age, it's 1979, that it, when it's not white pages, but 3,360. I mean, that book peaked at 5,760. That's 2,400 under its peak. I, that's, that's a pretty good deal for that book. Um, but, but yeah, that's a good deal for that book. And that buyer's premium is nuts at high dollar. Well, it's it's always the same. It's 20%. Well, it's a minimum of $29. And then once the price reaches a point where 29, where 20% 20 exceeds $29, so what that would be 150 bucks. Uh, once the, the book hits $150, where that buyer's premium is 30, then it jumps to 20%. And so it's, it's a flat rate, you know, but it's just you know, when you have a, a $10,000 book, it's $2,000 buyer premium. But from the perspective of the buyer, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can see like when you're, when you're looking at here, let's, um, so when you see this, uh, this page here that, that I could, I could be bidding on, it says next bid 220 with buyer's premium 264. So they don't hide it that you know exactly what you're bidding. It's just, I'm guessing it's probably some legal thing where because it's an auction and they take this buyer's premium, they're required to say what their percentage they're taking or something like that. I, I'm assuming that's part of it. I obviously I don't run an auction house. I don't know. Uh, but I'm guessing there's some, some rule like that where they have to show you. And so you see what you're paying everybody that, that's bidding now. Now that doesn't mean it hasn't like, there are definitely times when I, I know people have have uh, forgotten about the buyer's premium and bid on something and then realized afterwards that they had a, a much larger bill to pay. Uh, so that can happen, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rare. Uh, so just turn that off. So I, don't, I just, I just want to make sure I don't inadvertently like hit enter or something and it ends up bidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike, the, uh, the e so Mike is, is, uh, the, the, my buddy I was talking about in the video that said, you know, that, that, uh, that blue beetle 54, uh, bugs him because the, the bra disappear, the strap on the bra disappears and you refer to it as the magic bra. Uh, I did get a Superman 18 from 1942 graded 2.5 CBCS for $250. Would you say that was a good deal? I have no idea. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the value of Superman 18 in a 2.5, but uh, you can take a look. Um, 
Let's see. So Superman 18. Sorry, I've got my this I've got like two screens on here, so I gotta kind of look over here. So 2.5. Is it Superman 18? I mean, if you got it for $250, I would say yes. <laughs> you got an amazing deal for that book. I mean, like the last CGC. 2.0 sold for 995 a 3.5 sold for 2640 so you know whether you however you want to look at, at cbcs you know if you want to say you get a discount for it or whatever you know like the 10 percent or whatever discount like often when i'm pricing books if i see a cbcs book i'll i will look at it closely to see if it's maybe like a crack out candidate like a cpr candidate um and then i will either back out the the cost of doing that or i will generally like knock like 10 percent off the price when i'm doing my estimate because that's just from experience that's generally around what it does sometimes you get big discounts but yeah if you paid 250 dollars for <laughs> superman 18 uh congratulations because i mean look at this like an incomplete 0.5 sold for 700 like yeah you got a amazing deal on that book um some very cool dick tracy pedigree books uh, I, I don't think I was watching any of the Dick uh, Tracy books. So um, cause, so one of the things when when I'm picking books to price out, what I really tend to, what I, I kind of have to do, I have to focus on what I consider keys, cool covers, that kind of thing. Um, I'm not pricing everything because, I mean, in this auction alone, they have, in almost every week, the, the highest number I'm watching is... Uh, 17,986, uh, 17, which means 986 books. And it probably goes past that. And so they have usually on these weeklies like a thousand plus items per week. I can't price a thousand books. <laughs> so I'm uh, my numbers are all based on key issues or important issues. And so, um, yeah, if I, I since I I generally would view the demand for like Dick Tracy books as, as lower. Uh, it's just not something that I'm, I tend to price out. So I didn't really look at those. Uh, it's actually a gas pipe. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what that is. Um, uh, yeah, so it's not a water pipe, uh, but it, but it, it's a gas pipe, which is just as dangerous, I guess. But um, but yeah, no, it's a, uh, yeah. And and I, I have insurance, so I guess the books will be fine. Or not the books, I'll, I'll be fine. But uh, books might not be, but... Um, I don't know which one this was referring to, if that was talking about the Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, yep, and yeah, yeah, no problem, Mike. Like I said, I, I mean, I he, he uh, I, I had made my own logo originally, and he's like, you can't use that. <laughs> so, so I really appreciated that he, uh, he, he uh, helped me out with that. Um, and we ended up like incorporated, I had done a, a picture a long time ago uh of like a bunch of books on it because i wanted to use it as a background and so it was a bunch of the books i had at that point um and that's what that background behind the logo is it's uh, all those books let's see so valor comics i was not for it at all at first hobbies hero swayed me on it uh, this, i'm sure this is talking about the uh the blue led and the the washing when done correctly the grade bumps are insane yeah and I, i'm sure they are you know and i one of the things that if CGC is grading tanning more harshly, they're basically forcing people to do that. And, you know, I, I try not to be someone that that's uh, using going into like the whole conspiracy theory, you know, thing and all that. But you almost wonder if that's intentional um, because they know that this process exists and they they know that most people now press and clean their books. There are obviously people that send them in that don't still. But most people, if they're sending in their books, they're getting them pressed and cleaned. And a lot of the older books that that uh, hadn't been pressed or cleaned have been cracked out. And if they aren't cracked out, be a little skeptical because it means they're probably they, they probably are the grade they are. If somebody's like, "Oh, it's an old label," don't. It's a lot of the times now. A lot of those old labels, people have already taken a look at them. They know if they can get a bump out of it or not. But if you can get a bump from cracking out a book that has tanning you know, or a stain on it. Like that, that X-Men nine that I, that I had my recent CGC unboxing, 
that book looks like an 80, maybe an 85, and but it has a stain on the back. So it got a four. So hey, so so for somebody, I have that book up on eBay. If you <laughs> want to buy that book and make an attempt at uh, uh, removing the stain, that is an option. And it may get a significant bump from that. And uh, and believe me, that, that stuff crosses my mind I because I know those processes exist and I know that I could get bumps from them. And so I, I, I totally get it. Um, I just, uh, I haven't, I haven't gotten around to being comfortable with, with that yet. But uh, yeah, if I, if I have my book turned from a $400 book into a $2,000 book, it may change my mind. Uh, get newbie a toss 39 so you can find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, man. I, I hope he gets, I hope he gets that book. We, we give him a hard time all the time about that. Um, let's see. I would be interested in seeing the process value. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I only, I've never seen anybody actually do it. I just, I've, well, I've seen some of the videos from, uh, what's it called? can't remember. It's the guy that, that makes the, the Mac, Mac cube or whatever it's called. Uh, I I've seen some of their, their stuff. That's where I first started seeing it come up maybe like a year ago or so where they were doing different types of tests with paper and, and all that kind of thing. Um, I'm just waiting to get a decent amount saved to start buying off heritage. I find that sometimes books go for really, really cheap and I'm just like, darn, if only I had XX to buy that. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's one of the things like I, I try to, I, I do, I try to keep like some money available to, to be able to buy things when deals come up. Um, and, uh, but I, I'm usually not very good at it. I usually like, I, I, I come across deals and I end up buying it and then I just have to wait till I sell stuff to buy more. But yeah, it always stinks when you see a book for a, for a really good price and, uh, you can't get it because the, uh, you just, you don't have the cash at the time. Yeah. It's always, uh, it's frustrating. Um, let's see. You have your bidding enabled, Ryan, but you're a couple seconds behind. Um, well, yeah, but I, it's because you guys are seeing a lag of, of me. So, um, so yeah, so I'm not, uh, like I could, I could actively bid on these things if I wanted, if I wanted to. Um, but, uh, you're, you're probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 seconds behind, uh, what, what the actual auction is. Um, I'm taking advantage of the lows on DC books and picking up the ones I really want. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with, with DC books, a lot of them didn't participate in the comic boom. So a lot of them have really kind of just continued their, their general trend. There are some that definitely did. There are some books that really spiked, uh, but a lot of them just stay pretty consistent. And so that's, that's why in one of the videos I've done recently, I talked about how if you want to buy comics that you don't feel like you have this big risk of a drop, DC books are probably a pretty decent option uh, just because the Marvel books, a lot of them have gone up so much. And I, I really, it does seem like a, not all of them, but a lot of them are coming back to that uh, traditional trend line. So, I, I mean, for me, honestly, that's the opposite of what it, so it says uh, raw books seem to go cheap on heritage. That's kind of the opposite of what I've, I've seen. I, I generally see raw books go about graded price. Uh, now you can, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier in this video, you can find some some good deals if you're buying the lots, like where it's like 10 books or 20 books. Um, but I don't normally watch those ones. They just take more time. And I just I have to be kind of efficient and fast when I'm when I'm reviewing these, because like I said I got to price hundreds of books per week. And so uh, just to be able to do that, I, I have to pick and choose what I can actually watch. Oh yeah. And then the follow-up, especially raw lots. Yeah, I, I agree. Raw lots are where you can, you can find some deals. Now I don't know what their shipping is like, cause you can buy like short boxes from them. I don't know what they charge for the shipping on those. I've never bought like a, a huge raw lot from them. I think the biggest one I've bought was, it was like a, maybe 15 books. It was a, a number of the books from the, the Marvel superheroes run because it had a Marvel superheroes number 20 the, the doom cover. And it had one that looked like it was pretty nice. And I wanted that book. That was the only book I really wanted from the lot. And so that's one of the ways I kind of will price those lots for myself is like, I'll just look at the, the key issues, the ones that are in there that I want and everything else is just kind of filler. Um, 
right now I'm trying to get some high grade green lantern stuff. They're just, uh, they just go for cheap right now. Even bigger keys like for Sinestro cover, got an eight O for raw for around 200. Yeah. Um, I've, I've talked about that where it's like for the non keys, like in the green lantern and the flash runs, like you can get some pretty nice books for way cheaper than you would ever be able to get something equivalent in Marvel. Um, you can get some pretty good prices. People say it's hard to get the spider so white on it. I don't know which one that's referring to. Maybe that's that amazing Spider-Man 31. What's the point of heritage putting up over streets? When... <laughs> I don't know. That like, I, I will say I, I really like, so the question was, uh, uh, what's the point of putting up heritage uh, or overstreet's 2022 price comparison on their auction and yeah i agree it, it that doesn't serve any purpose but one thing i'll say that i i can't remember if i talked about this in the last one or not uh one of the things that heritage does now that's really nice is you can see here sometimes they actually pull in the cgc graders notes this one they did but even if they didn't even if they don't they always now have, and I think they've even done it retroactively back to old sales. They have the link to CGC. So you can see the graders notes and it takes you right to it. it. I think that's awesome. That's what every auction house should be doing. I think that is, that is an incredible add on that they've made that it makes it really easy to, uh, uh, to see these greater notes, you know, and, and what's, what's going on on that book. Uh, oh, shoot. Sorry. My leg is cramping a little bit. <laughs> that's that's the, the price I pay for uh, for biking right before I do this. Uh, so I had to straighten out a little bit. Um, let's see. But yeah, th this is something that I, I hope other auction houses follow suit with that uh, because I think that's just, it's such a great feature to have that. And it, clearly it wasn't that hard for them to do. It means that they... They probably just have somebody whenever they're putting in a book, they just have another field where they type in the, um, you know, the CGC, the number here. And let's see, I don't know how, let's see if it might be something really easy on. Yeah. So you can see how the way CGC does it is they just have the number up in the URL. So it makes it really easy to, to link those. So yeah, I think that's great. Let's see, where are we at? Are we almost out of the Amazing Spider-Mans? We're getting close. So like I said, the last one I have on mine is one seven, was one before this. It was the, uh, it was this one right here. Went for 600 bucks. That that book has come down quite a bit. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if that one comes back up because I, I thought they had, they have like a show or something coming out um, with that character. But uh all right, there's one coming up that I want to watch. Let's see. This one. Uh, no, it's already way over what I want to pay. <laughs> okay, so this is Archie's Madhouse, uh, number 22. If you're not familiar with this book, uh, this is the first. that was the first appearance of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. That was a huge sale for that book. That was a really big sale. 720 for a raw. Now this book is notoriously difficult to get out of like very low grades. I've had one copy of this book before and it was an incomplete 0.5 missing the center fold. Um, this one, they had it a VG plus. I remember taking a close look at it. I wasn't sure if I agreed with that or not. I mean, it looks pretty nice. It doesn't have any big creases. I don't think or anything. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty nice looking copy, but 720 is a, I had it estimated at 500. That's a, that's a big sale. And then we've got a raw Avengers one. That's a, I think this one's incomplete. Yeah, that's a huge number. 1,920. Uh, that one is, let's see, what was wrong with it? Um, it's missing a two page ad spread. So yeah, incomplete, missing two pages, sold for almost $2,000. So that's, that is one of the silver age keys that has not really taken a hit. As everything else has come down, this book hasn't. So Mickey Swagglehoss Comics, you know, if you're in here, you've, uh, you know, you've made some good choices with your Avengers number one, because that book just, that one has fought the, uh, the retreat in prices that a lot of other books have seen. This is another really incredible book. This is a nine, four of Avengers number 11. That price seems low. I had it at 3000. Wow. Yeah. That one went 
I was estimating this one would go for 3,000. Went for 2,160. Its record was 3,360. This is like the second like full appearance of Kang, kind of, sort of. I don't know. It's Kang's, you know, Kang's so weird with all the different places that he appears. You know, you've got him as Ramatut. You've got him as uh, Amortis. You know, it's all, but but I think this is like the second full appearance of Kang. Um, but yeah, that that was a great price because I Kang is going to be a huge character in the MCU. I mean, I I loved just a little bit that we got of, of him in, in Loki. I think that he's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm really hoping, I, I'm hoping that this, this last phase has been a kind of like a, just like a little bit of a, a letdown. They're trying to, you know, just, they're, they're getting everything back together and that we're gonna, we're going to see some, some better properties moving forward because I mean, that, that black Panther trailer looks awesome. I am really excited for, for the, the black Panther movie with Submariner. I think that trailer looks incredible. Uh, then I thought that the, uh, what was it called? The, uh, the secret invasion that uh, Disney plus show looks really good. It's like, it looks like a, a, a show version of winter soldier. I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for that because winter soldier is one of the best MCU properties. That movie is, that movie is awesome. Um, Nick Cage's comic collection. Most of the really rare books he bought were restored and sold to him as unmolested. Yeah, I, I didn't know much about uh, that other than that he has some really incredible, uh, really incredible books, uh, but or did. I, I don't think he's gotten rid of most of them or a lot of them were stolen and all that because you see the Nick Cage, Nicholas Cage collection books come up every once in a while. I think those would be fun to own. It'd be a fun one to at least like have one of. I've, I've never had one of them. And I think that'd be fun to have. I think YouTube has had a significant impact on comics in the last couple of years. Well, I don't disagree with that. Uh, I I would say it definitely has. And I, I, I'm aware of that. And I, I, I really do try to not impact things. I'm not trying to like, move, I don't want to move prices. I don't ever want it to seem like I'm trying to impact prices of books. I own all that kind of stuff. I'm, I am very aware of how, like in an auction, if you just add one more person or two more people that are interested in a book that can have a huge impact on the price that that book goes for. And so that, that is something that I, I consider a lot whenever I'm talking about books, I, I really do consider that. And I try, I, I know it's something I can't avoid, um, you know, talking about books, there's going to be people that get more interested in them or whatever it might be, but um, it is something I really do consider when I'm, uh, when I'm looking at, or when I'm talking, picking what I'm going to talk about that I, I try to be as cautious as I can around that. Uh, chasing high grade is pricey. Gold allows you to chase books in any grade. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I don't care about page. I mean, I generally don't care about page quality in anything, but I don't care about page quality, especially not in golden age. I, I generally don't care about grade. What I do care about is appearance. Um, I don't like really big missing pieces on the front. I don't care if they're on the back. I'm not. I'm not showing the back of the book. You know, I, I don't care if the pieces are missing on the back of the book, but. Uh, when I'm, when I'm looking at golden age books, a lot of time for me, it's, it's how does that book present, you know, like number one is the book itself. Number two is the presentation of the book. And then three would be like page quality or well, I guess three would be grade and four would be page quality in terms of what's really important to me, especially when you're talking about really rare stuff. I mean, I picked up a suspense comics one recently and I don't know if this is the reason I got it for a good price or not. I'm not, I'm telling you, I'm going to, if I decide to sell it, I'm going to sell it for a lot more. <laughs> I'm not going to let it go for cheap. Um, but uh, it was a brittle page book, but I'm like, there's like, I think like 15 copies on census or something. It's like, you can't be picky. Like you can't afford to be picky. You might see another copy come up for sale in two years and, and you're like, okay, maybe you're going to wait two years. And what if that copy that comes up is an eight Oh, and now that book is like 50,000 you can't get it you know, like you, you really can't afford to be that picky unless you have just an endless budget. If you have an endless budget, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I don't have an endless budget. Uh, so, so I have to be, I, I, I'm very open to whatever the book is going to end up looking like when I, when I pick it up. Uh, I picked up a nice example of Green Lantern 76 recently. Yeah, that, that is one of my favorite covers of all time. It, you know, it, I, in my CGC unboxing I did earlier this year, I got back a nine 
two. And honestly, I think it could have gotten higher. CGC damaged the book a little bit. <laughs> I was not happy. Uh, and um, I, I think it maybe could have hit a nine four. And um, but, you know, I'll take a nine two. I, I bought that book raw on eBay like two or three years ago. And I had had it for a while. I, I, I knew it was nice. And um, I didn't, I wasn't sure that it was going to get that grade. But after I saw it pressed, I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is just stunning. That, that book is incredible. I think it's one of the best Neil Adams covers of all time. Um, let's see. CGC is fast. The guy I use, his last five orders in modern were 14 days even quicker than his fast track economy. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit earlier. They they're just they're blazing. Um, they are really really fast. And yeah, thank you everybody for joining the video or joining the chat. We've got seventy four people in here. It's awesome. Uh, let's actually let's put put the uh, the auction back up. Let's see what else is because we I think we've got some. There's a couple cool Batman books that are coming up in a little bit. Where are we at? Oh, like two. Yeah. All right, they're coming up soon. Um, so there's a Batman number ten. A five O. So let's see. I don't know what that one's sitting at right now. Maybe I'll want to bid on that one. Let's see here. Sorry if I'm being quiet. I gotta. All right. I I, I know what I know what my bid price is. So we'll see what this one. We'll see what it gets to. So it's the next book. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to bid on this one. It's not my favorite early Batman cover. My favorite early, or one of my favorite early Batman covers is, is number nine. I, I love number nine. Um, I jumped up. <laughs> it's not a bad price though. That's still that's still a good price for that book. Um, I had estimated it at 2,700. It's now at 2,400. Let's see if it gets any more bids. Um, uh, yep, there's one more. So we're at 2,520. Let's see if it hits the 2700. It needs two more bids to get there. I don't know if it's going to get it. It feels like this is going a little light. Oh, there's one more. Just needs one more bid and it'll beat my estimate. All right, 28. Yeah, I mean, Golden Age Batman doesn't go cheap very often. <laughs> it really doesn't. It, it, uh, it, so yeah, that's 2880. Like I said, I estimated at 2700. Record was 3600. But I think that might have been like a promise pedigree book or something like that. So that was a, you know, pretty solid sale for that book. Uh, but uh, yeah, like one of the one of the best deals I ever got on Heritage was for a Batman number nine. This was this had to be back in like 2019. Um, they had listed it as poor condition, which means 0.5. And uh but when I looked at it and I looked at the description, it was complete. And I was like, why is this book a 0.5? It had a lot of water damage, but I was like, why is this book a 0.5? I ended up winning that book for like $200, like $200 or $250 for a, a complete Batman number nine. It was not missing any pieces out of the front or the back. And uh, I ended up, I, I, I now own like a 4.0, something like that. And so when I bought that 4.0, I sold the other one raw. And the person sent it off to get graded and they got a 2-0, I think, out of it. And so, I mean, that was crazy, like a like 200 bucks. And it's because I, I think that they just, they graded it wrong or they put the wrong thing in the listing or whatever. And so uh, that one ended up going for a steal. So that's why sometimes it's definitely worth like checking the description to make sure, like if, if you see, because I, I will, every once in a while, I will see this is something to just kind of warn you about. Like if you're buying raw books, they usually will put a parent in front of the grade if it has some type of restoration on it, but they don't do it all the time. But in the notes, they will say if there's restoration. And so if you're if you're bidding on a raw book, always check those notes because sometimes they will not put a parent. And so you could have a uh, unpleasant surprise uh, when you realize that afterwards. I'm really curious what that FF1 that was found in the Hoarder House in the Bryce Comics video did I will come back as. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I watched that video. I, I would assume, I think he's already sent it in. I would assume he has. You'd think it'd be back already. You're close to it. I mean, cause that's, it has to be a walkthrough. I don't, 
I would guess he sent that to someone else to press. I'm assuming he didn't press that himself. I wouldn't want to press that myself. Maybe he did. I don't know, but I, I would, I would happily pay someone else <laughs> that that is like really, really experienced to press and clean that book. I wouldn't want to risk, you know, potentially damaging that. Cause yeah, that is not a cheap book. A walkthrough is not worth it. Uh, if you can be graceful and submit express, you're better off. Uh, it just depends on the value of the book. Yeah. So that's for me. I mean, I have, like, I like to submit in the lower tier, I, as low of a tier as I can, just because of the price, but there are, you know, they have their, their price ranges on the value for the book. And so there are certain books that you just can't slip into like an express tier. <laughs> like if you try to slip a fantastic four, number one into an express tier, they're going to immediately go no. And they're going to upcharge you because CGC will charge up charge you uh, if they think that you should be in a different tier. And, uh, but yeah, I, I the only exception I, I had was uh, when I was talking about that earlier was the magazines because they're just so slow regardless that I just paid for the walkthrough with the magazines. Uh, what do you think that Mystic Comics 6 will sell for? Crazy first appearance, Stanley's first comic character, The Destroyer. I estimated it at 15,000. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that one, I talked about that, or I, I made a post about that in uh, um, on Instagram. I think I priced that. Yeah. So that one is 17639. Let's jump to that book. Uh, 17639. So this, this book is kind of crazy to see in a weekly auction. This is the type of book that you would expect to see in a, uh, you would expect to see this one in a, like the, the signature auctions. Yeah. I mean, it's just, this is a rare book. This is, this is the first appearance of this character called the destroyer. This is the first character created by Stan Lee. And, and so this is a big book. It's a, a Nazi, you know, world war two book. Uh, I can't remember if this is a, who did the cover? Oh, covers by Jack Kirby and Alex Schomburg. I mean, <laughs> you can't ask for much more than that. Um, and it's a five, five, like from 1941. Now, like I said, I have it at, uh, I estimated it at 15,000. It's already at 14,400. I wouldn't be surprised if it beats 15,000 by a lot, but, Based on, I mean, this is one of those books that is very, very difficult to estimate price. So I'll show you, I'll kind of show you why. So let's go to, it's this one here. So yeah, like it, it never sells. <laughs> you know, this, this book never sells. The census is 33 universal copies. So this is not a book that really ever comes up for sale. The last sale was a three five in March of this year for 8,455. So what I basically do in a situation like that is I kind of look at, and, and I know some people don't like, you know, the whole price per point thing, but it's, it's, sometimes that's all you can do. You, you just, you have to try to guess that way. And so at a three five price per point is what, like 2,500 bucks about. And so at a five, Oh, that would be like 1250, 55 would be 1375. I assume like as a grade goes up, you get a little more price per point. So I did 15,000, but I could see it going for like 20. I wouldn't be shocked if that book ended up selling for like 20,000. Um, it's just, it's such a rare book and, and in grade, like a five, five, I mean, that's an incredible presenting copy for 1941. Uh, and it's off white to white pages, a nice page quality. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this book, this is going to be a, a big book. This is one of the other things. I mean, that back colors and the back cover is incredible too. You've got, you know, red skull on there. That's one of the things I talked about in a, uh, the recent unboxing video where I was showing the back cover for kind of some of these more, uh, these, these pre-code horror books from the non-major publishers and their back covers are, they're all like white like boring, you know, just black and white type, type, uh, covers. And then you look at like DC and Marvel, their back covers are sometimes as good or better than the front cover. I mean, like the, the big, like Superman action comics titles, you know, in this case, 
uh mystic from from time and, and it's timely which is basically marvel mystic comics i mean like look at that back cover that that thing is incredible the colors are incredible everything about it and uh and so yeah it, i just think it's interesting how the the back covers are are so much uh, more detailed and it definitely shows that they they were the ones with the money uh, those those big publishers um, how often do you get double covers i have only ever owned two maybe three two or three double covers i mean so i don't see them i don't get them very often um this is it's not something i come across very often uh one of mine was a it was a uh sensation comics it was like the early wonder woman and so it was a really cool one that was a double cover it's this it's this copy that was an homage to action comics one where she's like throwing a, a car on the cover um but it was a high grade it was like an eight five or something like that double cover uh, but I've rarely ever, I rarely have had double covers. I had an X-Men eight. That was a double cover and that sensation. I don't know if I've ever had one other than those two. Uh, no, I don't know what mine graded as. Um, I have it estimated as a five, five, six, but after seeing that four five, I'm like, Oh crap. Like, is mine going to be like a four Oh or a three, five or something like that? Uh, so, so, and he's talking about my crime suspense stories, 22. So, um, no, I don't know what the grade is yet. I, I don't check the grades till they come they come back when I do the videos. So uh, so you get to see my uh, disappointment <laughs> when I get that book. Because now, like, I, and I will talk about that in that video. Now I'm concerned. I'm concerned that book is going to come back like a 4-0. Um, and uh, that's going to really, really suck. But we will see. Um, Uh, yeah. So like I said, no, I don't, I don't know what mine is yet. It's, it's at CGC right now and it, it's not, it's not even in grading yet. It's just says scheduled to grading next to the the name. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the one on heritage, like it looks incredible. It, it does have a little bit of like wear on the top edge, you know, that kind of thing. But like, it's one of those things where I'm like, if that's a four or five, like, what, what, what is, uh, you know, what, are, what are these other books? Like I, I got a four or five golden age pre-code horror back, uh, book back in my recent submission. And I'm like, that's a four or five, you know, it's got spine wear, it's got color rub on the cover. It's got stain on the back, you know, that it's like, that's a four or five, like that, that crime suspense story is 22 is a stunning example of that book. Um, Got mine in a two for one, two slabs for a price. Crime twenty two five zero and a Walking Dead blank that had a sweet artist sketch. Paid close to seventy five hundred. Don't regret it at all. Yeah, I mean it's one of those books where you kind of have to pay what the person wants to a point, um, because I mean if you look on eBay right now, I think there's a nine four that someone's asking a hundred thousand dollars for, and there's a point five that's missing the bottom half of the cover where the best part of the cover is like guaranteed. That was like someone's mom was like, no. And she tore the, <laughs> tore the bottom half of that cover off. And uh, so, so yeah, I mean, your options are extremely limited because even though that book has like 350 copies graded or 330, which is extremely high for the golden age, nobody wants to sell them. You know, like you, you get your copy and then you're like, I'm not selling this unless I get a better copy. <laughs> and so, so it's one of those books that it's just the, the availability of them is very low, even if there are more than normal graded. Mm. Let's see. If you love horror comics, crime 22 is up there. It's my favorite book in my collection. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it is near the top of my, my favorite books. Now I was telling someone else, I'm like, if I get something in the fours, I may sell that book because I'm going to be so annoyed, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. I mean, it was like, it was sold to me as a six, six, five. I didn't really think it was that I, I had it as a five, five, six. Um, but like, I mean, gosh, if it gets in the fours, I'm going to be, I'm going to be crushed. Um, Cause yeah, I, I paid a lot for it. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Chad, there's a vault of horror. I really want, I think it's 35. It's the Christmas cover. Yes. My favorite EC cover is probably that one. Uh, so it's, it is vault of horror 35. It's, 
I have one at CGC right now. It's a low grade. I think I had it at like a two five or two or something. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a Johnny Craig cover. It is, it is one of my favorite covers just of all time. Just, and it's, like I said, I think my favorite EC cover because it's just, it's got that right amount of like comedy to it where it's, it's just, it's a funny over the top crazy cover. Cause you've got the guy that he's giving his wife a coffin for Christmas. And it says like, on he it's like, cause it has a tag on it where it says like to my wife. And, and it's just like thinking of him, like taking the time to make that tag and all that kind of stuff. It just, it makes me laugh. Um, now this is a cool book. Uh, this is a uh, blue bolt number one twelve, And, I think that's a pretty solid price, like high, strong price for that one. Let's see here. What do I have it as? Yeah. I had it at 1400 and it is up over 2000 already. That is a big sale for this book. It's never sold in this grade before. So it's one where you had to kind of like estimate, but man, almost, almost 2,400. I'm telling you golden age. Week after week, strong sales. Just week after week, it just it, I I don't I don't know why, but yeah, two thousand six hundred and eighty dollars or six hundred and forty dollars. That that was I could if I do a, a top ten video this week, I can almost guarantee that might be on there because that is a huge number for that book. Um, let's see how far off is that crime suspense stories? Not too far. About 70 items. So we might get there while I'm still on. Um, uh, Heritage always goes so high at bidding. I mean, it just, it depends. Uh, so like you saw earlier, like a lot of those amazing Spider-Man high grade books, those nine twos, those were going cheap. A lot of those went really cheap. Uh, so it's, it's book to book. Uh, I think golden age has been going really strong. Uh, definitely. And generally my experience had been high grade silver age had also been really, really strong. And so that's why those, uh, those ASMs going low was a little surprising that that wasn't normal from what I normally see from them. Uh, let's see when some books. Like yeah. I, I haven't really been, uh, been watching ahead of time enough to, to bid on stuff. There, there are a couple that I'm interested in. Um, there's one coming up in a little bit that I would definitely be interested in. Uh, so we'll see though. It's just, it, it's tough. I can never predict. I mean, usually like in any given auction, I win zero to, I mean, it's been, there have been times that I've won like 14 books. <laughs> so uh, I, there, there have been occasionally times when I've had a really large box from, from heritage show up, but usually it's like, one to five, one to four. Um, but I have to be kind of paying close attention because you got to catch those deals when they come up. And, and like I said, there were some deals in the early Amazing Spider-Man ones that I probably would have bid on. Uh, but but I uh, I didn't in this one. Um, I press and dry clean books, done it for over seven years now. I got a buddy learning advanced techniques like whitening. It's going well for him. I may have to learn those from him. Yeah, I've never tried to do that myself. I just send them you know, to someone else, uh, it would be a skill that would be cool to have, but I just, I, I don't have enough time anyway, <laughs> let alone time to, to learn to press and clean books properly, because at least my understanding is you, you have to, there's a learning curve and you potentially kind of need to destroy a few books in the, on the way. And so before you actually want to start dealing with books that are hundreds or thousands of dollars, you got to wreck a bunch of books that are, that are not worth much. And so it's just, yeah, a lot of, a lot of upfront time. You also have to have the space for the equipment and everything, which I don't have a lot of space for that equipment. Um, I just picked up a Tales of Horror 5. Never seen those covers. Yeah, Tales of Horror has one really big book on it. I can't remember the issue. If it's six, six or eight. Uh, it's the one, let's see here. It's the one with the snake going around the tower. Might be eight. Let's see here. Why are you taking so long? Yep. Yeah, Tales of Horror 8. This book, um, for whatever reason, this one specifically uh, is, is pretty pricey. 
Um, but yeah, it's a cool cover and it's virtually impossible to get in anything out of super low grade. I mean, look at this census highest on census is a 5.5 and there's only 44, but yeah, that book for whatever reason just does not exist outside of low grade, low to kind of low mid. Um, but yeah, yeah, that is, this is the biggest book in that run. That, that book is pretty pricey. Um, only thing with whitening, if you don't do it right, you can risk a purple label. Yeah. And I've heard people say that they, they there have been people that have gotten purple labels back, but, um, like if they don't get rid of all the peroxide or something like that, but, um, yeah, it's definitely a risk. Uh, Swigelhaus. Yeah. I'm always tempted to see PR books or remove resto, but it's a risk in time. It's risky and time consuming. Yep. Yeah. I've got, I have an amazing Spider-Man two that I've been thinking about having the color touch removed, but you know, it's one of those things where it's like, when I look at the cost for color touch removal and then having it repressed and then having it graded, I mean, it's just, it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I just, I don't know if the value is there. Um, cause it's already a lower grade book. And when you have lower grade books that are restored, they tend to kind of sell similar in price to the, to the unrestored books. And so I just, I just don't know if the value is there for you. That's the, that's the calculation you have to do if you're going to, and it's the same with just sending a book in to get graded. You know, you look at your, your price into the book, what you think it can grade out as what it costs you to get it graded. And in the case of restoration, having the restoration removed then is it worth it? Do you have a net positive afterwards? Because if you don't, you might as well just buy the book in the, in the grade you would, you were going to get and just sell the other one because you're taking a risk there. And if you can just remove that risk completely, just by buying the, the already unrestored book, then that's the way to go about it. Uh, yeah. Congrats on getting half your books back that were stolen. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, it's awesome that, that, uh, three, at least three of the books were found. So that's, uh, that was, a, a that, that, that was, I think like, just like people in the comic community out there, you know, once you put the word out that, uh, to find those books, I mean, it's crazy how quick, how, uh, how, how quick those can pop up because especially with his, uh, Marvel spotlight five, it had such an identifiable flaw on the cover with those tape poles is very easy to, uh, to, and it was a signature series CBCS. Like it just stuff that made it very identifiable. Um, let's see. Have a great night, everyone. And Swigel, good luck finding your books. Be, yep. Thanks EA sports for all the comments. Thanks for joining the, uh, the chat and everything. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and yeah, no, no problem. I, I, maybe this tells me how far I am behind in my comments. Cause I feel like I talked about that a while ago, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it is your, it's your money. You know, you, uh, it can, there are other factors like which characters do you like more all of that. It's not always just about what the book's going to be worth, but, um, but yeah, just kind of looking at the numbers. That's, that's how I, I picked, uh, 129. Finding pre-code horror books beyond a five Oh, is that pretty uncommon? I, I would say on average, yes. Uh, I think in my, I have a few EC books that I, I have predicted, I think in my current submission that that's there right now to get above that type of grade. Like I think I might have won it like a six, five or, or something like that. But um, I have multiple, I have a couple that are like 1.5 restored <laughs> you know, type books that I'm sending in, but you know, in some of those books, you just kind of take what you can get. And again, you, you hope for an, a presentable copy. That's that's a lot of the time what I'm looking for. Yeah, there there were, I think, three 129s that went up tonight uh, that I was watching. I don't know what they ended up selling for, but. So Golden Age, Silver Age keys on Heritage, sneaky good place to buy modern, though. Um, yeah, it, it all depends. Like I, I bought, uh, I bought my, uh, edge of spider verse two on heritage. I got that one for, for a good price. Um, but for, for whatever reason, um, ultimate fallout four sells for always like huge, price. like comparatively to like what you could get on eBay at any given moment, it sells for way more on, on, on heritage. I don't know why that one specific book, 
it often sells for like 500 to $800 more than you can pick it up on eBay. I have no idea why, uh, but that book does that quite a bit. Have you seen the Comic Link auction this week? There's so many huge books in it. I have not. I rarely watch Comic Link. Uh, part of the reason is it's so many books. Like those Comic Link auctions are overwhelming in terms of like the number of books that are out there in their auction that you have to try to go through if you're looking for stuff. And uh, that that's actually off. That's part of why I like the weeklies. Like, yeah, it's a thousand books. It's a lot, but I can I can get through a thousand books in terms of like reviewing them in it probably takes me 25 minutes to just pick out the ones I'm interested in. But those comic link auctions, it's like 10,000 books, you know, in a lot of their auctions, it's, they're just, they're massive. And so you almost have to like know exactly what you're looking for. It's, it's more of a, I feel like it's more of something where you're, you're targeting specific books, you know, to, to look for that book. Cause otherwise for me, at least it's just overwhelming. Um, I snagged a Witch's Tales seven O graded copy. Can't remember the issue. It was a file copy, paid three fifty. Thought it was a smoking good deal. Yeah, Witch's Tales has some cool covers in it. Um, Twenty five is obviously the big one. So if you're, that's the one. If you're, if you're not familiar with that book, uh, it's, it's one of the nice things about. And this is why I have all these different sources. I use Cover Price. I use Go Collect. I use GPA. I like that I can get pictures real quick on Go Collect. You don't have the pictures on on GPA. Cover Price is a great collection tool, uh, and all, that also has the pricing, gives you values for your collection. So they all serve a, I think, an important purpose. And they're not, none of them are really all that expensive. So let's see. Yeah, which is Tales twenty five. Yep, this one. So yeah, if you're not familiar with this book. Uh, this is basically this one where this person's ringing a bell with a head <laughs> inside of it. I mean, it's a crazy cover. It's by far the most expensive book in the run. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, that's a that is definitely one of the higher tier pre code horror books. Um, let's see here. Gary Kender is a great dude. He gave me tips a long time ago. Excellent presser. I call him the master presser. Dude does excellent work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know my, my brother uh, uses him, I think almost exclusively. Uh, I know Aaron double a comics uses him. Um, so yeah, I know a lot of people uh, use it and really like uh, Gary's work. Uh, and that's like one of the ways you can kind of like uh, see like the backlog that pressers have. It kind of gives you a little idea. Like I think his, his backlog is like, four months or whatever. And, and comic book presser that I use his backlog is like three or four months. And so, uh, so yeah, it's just, um, yeah, good pressers. They, they have, they often have big backlogs. Um, oh yeah. I'm sure I could, I'm sure I could learn to, to press. I'm not, I'm not concerned with, with my ability to learn how to do it. It's just the time I would, for me, it's more worth it to pay someone to do it than for me to spend the time to do it. Um, so that, that, that's just really what it comes down to just because with all the, the things that I'm, that I'm doing for, for me personally, like with the, just like, you know, you've got work and I've got comic stuff and I've got YouTube and I've got my triathlon. And I'm just like, I don't need to add pressing <laughs> to, to that. So I'm, I happily send them to someone else and, and let them, uh, let them pay for it or let them do it. Uh, I remember the recession in the early 80s. If this hits that level, we'll be able to buy really low. People buying on credit, rates climbing, trying to cut their losses. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it depends on the person that's selling. Um, I still, I mean, I still see a lot of dealers asking really high prices, you know, like they haven't really, a lot of dealers haven't come around to the fact that that prices have come down yet. And I, I think it could be like what you're saying is that there are people that bought on credit or whatever, and they're afraid to take the loss. But, you know, I mean, the way I look at it, like, so I generally consider myself, I, I consider myself a dealer, but I, you know, like I said, I also I collect books too. I think you can't be in this hobby and not also collect. It's pretty hard. Uh, but um, uh, with, with me, I, I kind of like when I'm for selling, I treat it like, any other type of investment that you might want to look at where there's no stock investor that's right hundred percent of the time. I mean, like a good stock investor is probably right 70% of the time. So you should expect 
to take some losses every once in a while. And I think there's this mindset where a lot of people are afraid to take a loss, where they're just afraid to sell something for less than they paid. And, you know, like I'm not afraid to take a loss. I, you know, like if I, I figure if I, as long as I have more that I sell for more than I sell for less, I'm doing fine. <laughs> you know, And so that's, that's the approach I, I take with it. And I think, but I think a lot of dealers are afraid to do that. And so like, you'll, you'll, they'll get like a, a reasonable offer for something and they'll refuse to accept it because there might be taking a loss, but it's like, that's what the book's going for. Now you have to be able to change your pricing and whatever with the pricing of those books. And um, otherwise you just end up holding on to everything. And so, because I would rather get that money out of the book so that I can go buy something else. Cause like we were talking about earlier in the video, um, you know, if something comes up at a good price and you don't have any cash, you can't buy it. And so sometimes you have to take a loss to get that cash available to, to be able to pick up some of those deals that might be coming. Uh, had my first CGC brought for me, followed by the second. At least I won't have a hangover with this hobby. I don't know what that means. Sorry, I, if you if if I get to your comment, if you can uh, repeat, I'm not sure uh, what what uh, what that comment means. I messed up on a ton of books before I got it right years ago. I do them all on my own, but I understand why others don't want to. It's more time and initial. And, and yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that's exactly it. It's just you've got to, you've, there's a learning curve and all that that goes with it. And, and, uh, I just, I don't have the time. Oh, here's the golden age cap. I think I, this is one's incomplete. If I remember correctly. Yeah. It's a poor condition or fair. No, this was fair. So this was actually complete. Uh, what did I estimate that one as? I estimated it at 900 and it's already at 12. So that is a, uh, that, that's a strong sale for this book, which again, it's not all that surprising. I mean, it's a big sale. Um, the tricky part, if you're, if you're thinking about this from the perspective of purchasing it is that there's not really going to be any record on any of the public sites for this one, uh, cover price might have it cause they do raw sales. Uh, but, but this isn't a graded book, so it's not going to be on GPA. It's not going to be on go collect. Um, and it's now at 1560. That is a big sale for that book. Uh, so let's see. I just want to see if there's anything coming up that I was looking at bidding on. Uh, not for a little bit still, but yeah, 1560 for that. That is a really strong sale for that one. All right. Enjoying the content on Sunday night. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's fun hanging out. And as long as I keep getting questions, I'll at least until like my what falls asleep in this chair. <laughs> it's not the most comfortable chair that I sit in. So, you know, the, uh, the couple hours in the chair always, uh, hurts after a little while. Um, let's see. As long as I can find pre-code and three or better, I'm cool with it. Many three O's present. Well, I mean, I have, I have a number of 1.8s that present really, really well. I mean, my suspense comics 11 is a 1.8 and it's missing pieces out of the back cover. And so you can find some really nice presenting books. And especially when you're talking about golden age, because you'll get books that are a little more fragile, a little more brittle. And so I had a war against crime 10, that one I showed earlier, the vault, first vault of horror, first vault keeper. I think it was a one O or a one five and it looked awesome. And it just, it had a completely split spine. And so that's why I say like, one of the things you really want to look for are, especially in golden age are certain types of flaws because you can get certain types of flaws where you get a lower grade that makes the book more affordable, but it, it still looks really, really nice. And things like split spines, detached covers, uh, you know, pieces out of the back cover, those types of things. You can, you can find some great deals on, on rare books. I picked up the ASM. So I'm assuming you, uh, you bought, did you buy the nine, eight? Uh, this is Malibu comics. I picked up the ASM 66, ASM 51 got away from me, came in second. Um, so I think that ASM 51 was a, that was a, that's a big book because uh, that black cover, uh, that's the second kingpin. Uh, but yeah, congratulations on your pickup. That's such a cool cover. Prices are low. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends. I mean, low is all relative, you know, it's like low relative to, um, 
to maybe prior sales, but that doesn't mean books are cheap. You know, low is a relative number. Cheap means, you know, it's like a $5 book or a $10 book or whatever. But uh, yeah, a $1,000 book is never cheap. It's just, it may be going for less than what might be expected. Um, I've got a book with a stamp cut out, but still in the book. Does anyone know how? So I'm guessing maybe it's like taped back in. I've had people ask that before, and I don't know the answer to that one. I've never, I've never had that exact situation. I haven't seen a book graded with that. Um, I think they'll count it as there, but they're going to punish you probably for, uh, for like the, like almost like the tears to the book for the, the piece removal. Uh, but I, I honestly don't know. I, I don't know exactly how that one would get graded, but I don't think you'll get a qualified. It depends. Uh, the qualified, so it de qualifieds are, it depends how, what the grade on the book is in general. So if you look like at, at Hulk 181, you can get a, I think the highest I've seen is a 2.5. It may have seen a three, but maybe a 2.5 universal missing the Marvel value stamp. So if your book is already lower grade, worse condition, whatever, you can get a universal grade with the Marvel value stamp missing. That what happens is when you have the book appear to be a grade, usually the rule of thumb is two full grades higher, then they'll give you the qualified. So if you have a book that looks like a four five, but it's missing the Marvel value stamp, you'll get a four five green label. If you have a book that looks like a two five and it's missing the Marvel value stamp, you'll probably get a two or a two five. So that the, the green labels can be kind of, it's different uh, depending on the actual appearance of the book. <clears throat> Uh, now I will tell you, so for this one, tape it back in, <laughs> if you leave it loose, they will remove it and you will then get it missing. Uh, so you can't like, if you send a book in and it has like a piece that's missing or that that's, uh, torn out of the cover and it's not attached, but you have it and you have it sitting in the bag with it, they will not grade it and put that piece in the, in the case with it. So that's a case where just tape it on. You know, I, I would say, you know, get some, uh, whatever that, that stuff's called the <sighs> blanket on the name of it, but the special tape for, for using, for, uh, keeping books restored, but get that tape it in. And then if you're going to send it in and then do it, do not send it in with the piece cut out sitting like in the bag or on the page, they will remove it. Uh, I can almost guarantee you that. I did pick up a Hawkman 440 for 750. Not sure if that is a rare book, but I've never seen it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a rare book, but it's uh, it's a popular book. Zatanna is, um, I never know how exactly to pronounce it, Zatanna or Zatanna, but she is a very popular character. It's unfortunate that I think they said they're probably canceling the show that they were going to do for her on HBO Max. Um, but I like that book. That that one is one that's really hard to get outside of like a 2.5 or a 3. If you can find like an 8.0, like that book gets really, really expensive as you get to, to higher grades. Yeah, yeah, and thanks, thanks for uh, for joining the live uh, the live show. Always, uh, it's great to have uh, all the people in here. So yeah, yeah, do not send it in if it's just hovering. <laughs> I'll, I'll reiterate that. Um, now. I, I have had books that I've had pieces reattached to the cover with tape and they don't give it a restored. So now there can be times where you might get a grader that just decides they're going to be a jerk <laughs> and, they, and they might do it. Um, but, uh, but I, I think you'll be okay. Uh, in worst case, if you get a restored label, you know, you get it back, you crack it out and you take it out and you send it back in. I mean, however you want to deal with it. Um, but I, I think you'll be okay if you tape it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and speaking, thank you. Uh, thank you, Todd, uh, for the, the comment. If you haven't watched the like two videos ago, it was my 5,000 subscriber video. I'm giving away a 5.0 White Pages Fantastic Four 67 that I picked up raw in a collection earlier this year, got it graded, all of that. Um, and so go watch that video, do the things that you need to do to, to potentially win that book. And I'll do the drawing kind of at, usually the way I do it is when I uh, when I start to get 
less comments on it. Like when I, it's a long time between comments, then I'll, I'll do the drawing. I, I did give away the, uh, the, the one that I did like a couple of days before that or weeks before that, my normal kind of like October giveaway was the, uh, those five different monster books. Uh, so I did do the drawing for that. I, I have given those away. I'll, I'll probably make an announcement in a, a different video, but uh, so that one's out, but you can still, you still have a chance to win the Fantastic Four 67. So. Um, now what they'll, I'm sure what they'll do. So this question is they might consider it married. If you can't say it's the original stamp, they will want to be able to see that it's like, it is exactly the same cut you know, that it fits in there. Cause I have, I've heard about people sending them in taped in. I just don't know what has happened with it, but yeah, if it, if it's doesn't fit exactly, like if it's like, so it looks like somebody took it out of a different book, which usually the way that would make that really obvious is the, the page color, because you can tell right away when there's like, cause these books all age slightly differently and the page quality uh, would probably tell you that it's not the same one, but uh, that, if it, if it doesn't exactly fit and if it's like a different color than the rest of the page, like, yeah, you're getting married. <laughs> you're getting a married comment for that one. Uh, so yeah, you have to make sure you're aware of that. Why do you think postage costs so much to send and receive from international? I don't know, but I, I know for me to send a slab international is like 55, 60 bucks. And I don't normally ship international. That was maybe like the last one was maybe like a year ago. And so uh, it could be more than that now. Um, I, I do sell international, but I generally only sell international, um, through eBay. I use their eBay international seller program because with that, I just have to ship it to eBay in like Kentucky or something. And then they send it international. I don't have to deal with anything. So, um, but yeah, normally that's what I like to use. Uh, please don't bid me up on crime suspense stories 23. All right. I will try not to, I feel like it's gotta be coming up soon. So we're at 7253. Crime Suspense Stories 21 is 72.69. So we are only 16 away. Um, I'm actually interested in a book that's coming up pretty soon. Let's see. So I just, I got I to gotta keep my eye on it then. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to not let it, uh, I'll, I'll activate my bidding. Um, but uh, let's see. I'll try not to, to let my attention slip. Because that's always a risk. Uh, Let's just make sure I check what I want to pay. All right. All right. I know what I want to pay. So, um, yeah, I love that Heritage links to the Graders Notes. Oh, sorry. There we go. I love that Heritage links to the Graders Notes, unlike some auction sites that don't even include the cert number in the listing, and you have to take it off the cover image. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it is it is a really, really nice feature that they've, that they've added now. Yeah, yeah, that Avengers one sale. I mean, that book. I, I sold my four five, and uh, did I miss my? Did I miss it? Did I get distracted? I don't know. I sold my four five, and yeah, those, they just keep going up. And then I had a I had a point five restored, and I've sold that one. I, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, that's one of those ones that has really defied the uh, the drops in prices. Yeah, gotta flip those pages when buying. Yeah, you always have you always have to check page counts. I check page counts on everything. The number of books I've had that have missing pages or cutouts or whatever that I've had to return is ridiculous. Ugh, dang it, <laughs> that was the one I wanted to bid on. It was sitting down at six hundred. Um, I had it estimated at fourteen hundred. It still went for a pretty good price, um, but more than I wanted to pay. Uh, that Cindy, it's just, it's a fun cover. Let's, uh, I'll show that one. So yeah, she's like basically waiting. This guy's waiting for a date with her and uh, she's talking on the phone. It's, uh, it's just, it's one of the kind of these fun kind of like good girl art type covers from the golden age. So uh, I, I thought maybe that one would go cheap and I'd get a chance to to swipe, you know, swipe in and, and get it, but it did not. Um, or let's see. Yeah. Only 10 away from the, the crime suspense stories. So <laughs> wherever Swagglehaus is dark house, dark Hawk is sure to follow. 
Yeah. I mean, I was watching the recent Bryce comics video where he was talking about the, the 15,000 book collection that he was looking at. There were a bunch of dark Hawks in there, you know? So, so Mickey, you know, you might want to, you might want to go over and check that one out. Like maybe cause he, he ended up passing on it. So <laughs> maybe you want to buy it you know, for all those dark, for the dark Hawks that are, uh, that are in there. Yeah. Chadwick dying hosed this phase. They planned for him to be the cap of the phase. I, I, I agree. I think that had a serious impact on, on their plans for this. Um, I'm sure that has caused a lot of problems and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's really sad just for, for him, for his family, for, for everything. And, um, and yeah, cause yeah, that, that definitely, I'm, I'm sure had a very major impact on the MCU. I think Batman 121 has potential for big gains. I understand WB discovery is considering a Mr. Freeze movie in the vein of the Joker film. He would be a perfect character for something like that. He's kind of got the, the whole dark, sad backstory. Um, I, yeah, I could, I could see them doing something like that. Uh, that, that book is, that's an interesting book. Uh, 121. Um, it's just, it, it has what I call a lot of price compression. And so when I'm talking about price compression, it's like across multiple grades, it sells for like the same price or close to it. I mean, it's like a, a three, five up to like a six. zero. I'll sell within a few hundred bucks of like maybe 500 bucks of one another, which is just insane. Like, then why don't you just buy the six? <laughs> you know, I don't get it. Um, but it's, it's so weird how some of these books, they'll, they'll have this, like the same price over a bunch of grades. And then you hit like one grade and it just skyrockets. And that's, that's what that book does. So definitely one to keep an eye out on that. You can kind of aim for that higher end of the the price range because or higher end of the grade range, because if eventually it does spread out and then you get some more, what you call price expansion, uh, then, then yeah, you would potentially see some, some big moves too in that. How come GPA go collect, et cetera, never align with the prices I see on IG claim sales. IG has prices sometimes double, triple fair market value. I feel like there's another market that isn't being, I mean, some people just charge too much for their books. <laughs> that's, uh, that, I mean, that's part of it. Um, I, I don't, nobody is required to sell a book at anything. You know, that's, that's, that's one of the things I always, I talk about, you know, like, I mean, for me, like, I, I deal in the world a lot of like golden age stuff. And just because the last sale was something doesn't mean I'm going to sell that book for that. You know, it's like, I have to be, you have to want the book more than I want the book, you know, and a lot of times, or it's like, that's the one copy that's available. And so availability matters too. Now, if it's something where it's a relatively common book that you could just go on eBay and get it for half the price, then just go on eBay and get it for half the price. All right. So here's the crime suspense stories. Let's see how these do. So we've got, uh, this is issue 21. What did I have this one as? I had this one at 450. Ooh, it's already at 660, 780, 840. Wow. That is a big number for that book. Yeah. I mean, these are higher grades, but oh, 7,800 for a four five. Wow. That is astonishing. Yeah, that's, oh man, another one slipped in. <laughs> what is this at now? I don't want to accidentally bid on that. <laughs> 8,400. That, that's crazy. That is a huge number for that book. Huge number for that book. Let's see if it gets any more. Wow. 8,400. That's something else. So here's the 23 that you asked me not to bid on. It's going real cheap right now. We'll see what it, uh, <laughs> see what, oh, it's, it's getting some bids though. I had, I had estimated this one at, uh, 1800. It's at 1440. This is a, this, I mean, yeah, it's a big book. 1560. It's still going. We'll see what this one does. I'm still blown away by that 22. Holy cow. That is a big number for that book. 
So yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you won that book or not, but I think uh, that went below what I was expecting. Uh, I had I had it priced at 1800. I mean, I think it's a white page. Yeah, it's a white pages copy too, which is not very common for for EC. Um, so so yeah, that was a. So yeah, let me know if uh, if I eventually get down to the comments uh, on this one. Let me know if you ended up winning that book because I think that, that ended up being a pretty good price for it. Um, let's see if there's any other real big ones coming up. Nothing like really big. There's a Daredevil one that'll come up in a few. Yeah, two more. And we've got a Daredevil one that comes up. That one was a, it's a 7.0. It's a high grade copy. Um, that's a book that's getting some price compression too now. Cause like a 7.0 at one point sold for 16,200. That was the high for that one. And I currently have it priced at 8,000. It's sitting at 7,800 right now, pre like the live bids. But uh, yeah, all these are hitting some pretty good numbers. Like this one right here, I had estimated as 450. And it's up at what? Sold for like 520 something. So yeah. All right. So this should be the, I think this should be the daredevil. Yep. Yeah. So like I said, I had it estimated at uh, 8,000. It's sitting at like 7,500 right now. Let's see if it gets any more bids. Nope. Oh, yeah. So another book that it's been kind of trending down. Uh, we'll see how that one ends up doing, but, but yeah. All right. Let's check out some more comments. Um, Avengers 89.9. .9. I didn't watch that one. I wasn't watching any 99. .9, I don't think. Let me see if I if I did. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Let's see what number would that have been? It's probably around 17. Let's look at that one. Uh, 164, maybe somewhere around there. Sorry, I'm trying to look over on my. Um, so. No. Sorry, I'm not talking right now. Yeah, I mean, like, look at all these, like, high is like 9898998998. Just so many of them. Huh. Where's the 99? Nine nine? I don't know. Somebody will have to put it in the chat if you've got the number. Um, but uh, go back over here. All right. How would you go about pricing Wistries, Mysteries Weird and Strange number six? I got a 5055 for 420 20 a 35 sold for 1920 in 2022. And a three five sold for six eighty in twenty eighteen. Uh, I'd probably need a little more uh, than that, but we can take a look real quick. Um, History is weird. Number six. Uh, does it have a different name? Let's see here. Does it have a different name? You'd have to give me a different name on it because um, I don't see it on here. So it might, I, I don't know if it goes by something else. So, so yeah, if I, if I get to that, then let me know. Uh, think FF 49 C1 resto is worth the risk. It, it depends. It really depends. C1 can be a lot of things. Um, I'm assuming this one's color touch, but uh I've seen C1 color touch where it's like a big percentage of the spine. And I've seen C1 color touch where it's like a single dot. And so it does really depend how much, because then it's, I mean, there are times when you can get a great bump if you have the color touch removed and then get it pressed and cleaned. Uh, if the, if the, the restoration is small enough, but other times it'll completely just destroy the book. Uh, planning to make this a regular occurrence watching. Uh, so originally my plan was to try to, but most of the time I'm like in a rush to like get through my pricing. I'm, you know, from 
because uh, it takes me a while to, to, to do that. And so, because I need to do that to make sure I have the numbers for doing like comic market stuff and all that. So I don't always have the ability to, like sometimes I'm pricing like as the auction is going, like I'm staying ahead of the, the line of the auction, like pricing out books because I, I, I don't want to see what the sales price is, obviously, because then that in fact impacts my my pricing. So, um, but uh, but but yeah, so so I do want to try to do them more regularly, but uh, just I often don't have time on Sundays. Save the bag for the 28th auction. Is that the Halloween one? Uh, yeah, I, I will actually, I depends when it's on. If it's like an evening auction, I might try to do a live during that one too, because that would be pretty cool uh, to do kind of like a live during that that Halloween auction. But um, does your presser guy also remove Resto? I don't think so. I've never asked him to uh, or asked about it. Um, I I look for restoration and I make note of if it's on there just for valuation, for, for pricing of the pressing services. But uh, but no, like if I was going to do restoration removal, I'd probably send a, probably just send a CCS. Like that's like the only thing I think I would send to CGC for is the, is their restoration removal. I'm sorry. If you, I don't know if you're my dogs, they're going insane upstairs right now. So, <laughs> uh, wow. A ton of shadow pulps coming up late in this part, uh, in part of tomorrow's auction on heritage. I hear CGC is going to be grading pulp soon. Yeah, I've had some people say that they're grading them already, but I haven't seen anyone post a picture of a graded pulp. So I have to assume they aren't grading them yet because I follow enough people on Instagram that that seem to deal in pulps uh, that I would have thought I'd see them. But uh, I haven't, I, I'm not really into pulps. I mean, I like seeing them. I think they look pretty cool. They're, I've, I've had maybe two or three at, at one point, but um, it's not something I've ever, ever really gotten into. Uh, are you ever tempted to bump your keeper list to 75 or 100? It would kill me to move some of those books out of my PC if I own them. No, I've actually been dropping my keeper list. <laughs> so uh, at one point, I I was around 100, and I was like, this is too much. And so then I I made a massive cut down to 50 because I had been always wanting to be at 50, and then like I had let it drift up. And then uh, I made a massive cut down to 50, and then um, I had been talking in like this group chat that I'm in with. Mickey, you know, Swagahoss and, and uh, uh, Vancouver Comic Junkie and Newbie. And um, that's where this came up about about reducing my keeper list. And so, or just not just me, but like in general, like what would you t get it down to? And would you go for bigger books or, or those kinds of things? And so that's so why I've, I've been trying to kind of like condense it down and get some bigger books, that kind of thing, like that Captain America 74. Uh, I'm not convinced the premium that Pedri Comics get is worth it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it all it all depends what you're uh, to you if you think it's important or not. Um, a lot of times, it's the story behind it. It it adds that extra layer to it. Now, the funny thing is, like you would think, like the Mile High pedigree, that the story is that guy was just like a huge hoarder, <laughs> you know, like you know, but but those ones sell for one of the biggest premiums out of anything. And so I don't know, like, I think it's just the fact that, that it's just these all really, you'd think it'd be more that's just these high grade books, but I mean, it's just basically a hoarder. And, uh, but like, then you have stories like the Okajima pedigree where it's, um, you know, the woman was collecting these while she was in one of these Japanese, you know, internment camps in the U S during world war two. I mean, that, that is an incredible story behind and, and history added to those books. And you've got things like the Promise Collection and the San Francisco Pedigree, which are both basically stories of somebody who went off to war and didn't come back. You know, you've got those types of things that that are tied to those books that adds to them. Um, but there are other ones where it's just the person was a hoarder, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, but but yeah, but but the Okajima Pedigrees, those books, especially the ones when she was in the camp, so the books from like in the in up to like forty five. Uh, those ones sell for like four, five, six, sometimes more times what a non pedigree sells for. And I get it with those. I, I think that is the most significant pedigree in the entire, um, uh, of, of all the CGC pedigrees. And yeah. Hey, comic collector geek. And yeah, make sure you go check out his channel. His collection is, is amazing. Like he's, I feel like he's got like every book. <laughs> so I wish I had a comic room like he has that I could, I could 
put stuff up like like he's got. So yeah, make sure to go check out uh, his channel. If you're selling books to buy others, then in general, the comic market trends down or up, you still have the same proportional buying power. Uh, it all depends what you buy at. It, you know, that's why, like for me, at least my, my buy-in price is very important. Um, and so I have, I mean, I have my rules for what I'm willing to pay for a book. And if it doesn't hit that rule, I don't buy it. And that's just, that's just how it is. I mean, you've seen a couple of books come up tonight that I was interested in that I ended up not bidding on because they got beyond what I was willing to pay. And that willing to pay point is not market. I can't pay market if I want to then sell the book after eBay fees or whatever else, and then be able to buy other books and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, it matters what I pay for the book. Yeah. I So yeah, uh, Comic Collector Geek, I was watching Heritage too. I, I know we've, we've talked about this uh, on, in the past where we've maybe been bidding against each other every once in a while. <laughs> so it, that's always fun. Like I, when you, when you see people like on Instagram post a book and you're like, Oh, I was bidding on that one, you know, like that kind of thing. It's always fun seeing that, uh, you know, getting faces or names behind a lot of the, the books or, or things that are out there. Not really into pre-code books, but would love to get some single digit cat books. Yeah, um, I I would love to get a Captain America three someday. Um, I that cover is awesome. Uh, the cover. Let's. I'll uh, I'll show that one. If you're not familiar with that one, I mean Captain America one would be incredible, but I know my budgetary limits. <laughs> so, and uh, Captain America one is never going to be in them. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so this is this is Captain America three, and so it's this it's an awesome Red Skull cover. You've got this woman that he's put into like a cannon, <laughs> I mean, then you've got Cap in here busting in and just yeah, and then you've got uh, Red Skull tying Bucky up. Well, it's a uh, see, oh, where's that comment? Uh, you've got uh, Red Skull tying Bucky up onto this bomb. I mean, it's just. There's so much awesomeness on this cover. This is also Stanley's first work uh, ever. So uh, I, I don't think it's just ever in Marvel. I think it's his first work ever. Uh, but yeah, so this book has a ton going for it. Amazing cover, you know, the tie to Stan Lee. Uh, so, so yeah, this is one that I would, I would love to be able to get a copy of that book someday. So Famous Funnies 20792. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like, I, I mean, I'd be surprised if it stayed at, at $12, but Famous Funnies outside of the Frazetta issues, which are 209 to 216, there's just not a lot of demand for them. You know, you know the, the books that are have a huge demand are those Frank Frazetta covers from Famous, Famous Funnies, issues 209 to 216. Um, and it's just, it's one of those things where that's where it's really important to kind of know those keys, even in the golden age, you know, even when stuff's high grade. Um, I, I mean, I've had things, I was talking about this recently with someone, uh, it might've been Mickey, uh, about high grade, like silver age fillers, you know, like books in the Green Lantern run or Flash run. And like, I had a nine, two of, of some of a Flash book a little while ago, or it was a Flash book. And I had, I'd had it listed. I think it took me two years to sell that book. And it's just, when you're talking about hundreds of dollars or into the thousands for a filler, uh, there's just the demand just isn't, it's, you got to find that perfect person that wants that book and it can just be tough. Uh, what do you think about Dave Stevens cover books? Do you think those will be ever, or those will be covered in the future or maybe just in coveted in the future? Uh, like these pre-code horror books. I mean, I know a lot of people like the uh, Dave Stevens covers. <clears throat> um, Vancouver comic junkie who I talk with, he's, he's a big Dave Stevens fan. Um, I, I think they're pretty common though. So I don't, I don't know. That's where it's, I think there, there's a, a pretty large volume of them out there, but I, it's not an area that I'm really all that familiar with outside of hearing uh, Chris talk about them. Just tape. Back, so I think it's probably talking about the, uh, the piece tape back in. Uh, yeah. So I, I honestly, like, I really don't know for sure that, that might be one of those things where you send it in to learn how they do it or what, how they treat it. I I've, I've had, uh, I've had books where I've done that before where I, I wanted to know 
how they were going to grade something. And the only way to learn how to, how they're going to grade it is send it in. I mean, yeah, it sucks to have to spend the money to get it graded, but there's really no other way unless you've got someone that, that has specifically had that issue and can tell you, and I haven't had that issue. Oh, let's go back to, yeah. And so this is where you can see, this is the, these are these lots that they're selling. So this is, yeah, I mean, this one, it's like a hundred, that one was a hundred comic lot. Um, this one is a 70 comic lot. I know, I know some people that, that uh, will buy these cause they're, they're good for selling on things like whatnot, you know, or, or on, on those types of sales is they'll buy lots on here. And then you can, you know, if you want to take the time to parse them out and sell them individually, then that's a way you can do it. Um, what's interesting about golden age books, seen a lot of them at shows, but been going to cons for over 15 years have yet to see a pep 22 in person. Um, I think that's first, uh, Archie, right? I think that's what that one is. The one with the big, a lot of them I learned by covers, you know, it's like the big boot. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so this is, this is Pep Comics 22 first Archie. And so, uh, he's not on the cover there, but that is a very expensive book. Um, cause you've got, you know, it's a world war two book, but it's also first appearance of Archie. Uh, but yeah. And that's, that's one of the things like with, uh, when you try to like hold all this, this comic knowledge in here, you know, it's like some books I know by the cover, some books I know by the issue, all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it, it, cause uh, visually is usually how I need to identify books. So, so covers are a lot of what I remember. Yeah. Archival tape. That was the word I was looking for a while back, or you could use duct tape. <laughs> all right. Yeah, the, the Cindy, it, it went for a good price. Like I said, it went for less than I was estimating. I think I estimated 1400 I think it went for like 11 Um, But like I said, I've got my price and I had, it was over what I wanted to spend. So, um, let's see. Wonder at CGC when they're ready to give a copper or bronze a 9-9 grade. There must be some real discussions. That That's my understanding is that they aren't just going to give out a nine, nine, you, you know, they, it's probably that one. Like, I honestly, I don't believe that every book is graded by three graders, that whole spiel that they give. Like, I, I don't buy that for a second, <laughs> but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're, if somebody wants to give out a nine, nine for like a silver age book or something like that, or bronze that, cause they're like Captain America 100. I think there are two nine nines that exist. I imagine there's some discussion that happens with, with that. Oh, great. Thank you. 17168. This is that 99. Oh, it's an oh, it's a 98. I thought this uh, okay, I I thought somebody said it was a 99. All right, that's why. But yeah, 18,000 for a 98. That's that first red wolf, isn't it? Yeah. That seems really high. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that seems really, really high. Um, Avengers 80. Let's look that one up. Like, I mean, I, I've heard that there's like, there's some speculation that they're going to be using the red wolf, but like, mm, like nobody cares about the red wolf. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Like a nine, six for 1440. Th four years ago, a nine eight for nine seventy four. Yeah, that, that is. I would never have guessed that book would go for eighteen thousand. Like I would probably have said based on that fourteen forty, maybe like five thousand, something like that. Like three four times what the nine six sells for. Because let's see, this is twenty eighteen. It sold for nine seventy four. It's four eighty, so almost double. I mean, yeah, that that's a massive sale. I, I 100 percent agree with the comment section. <laughs> that sale is that is a big one. Um, I would not have expected that. I might have to make a note of that because that's that's easily like got to be one of the like the the high sales that I would I would want to talk about. Um, I lost the crime suspense stories 23 got too rich for me. 
Yeah. I mean, that, that's an expensive one. Like I said, I mean, I had it estimated at 1800 and I think it went for like 1560. So went a little below that, but still, um, it's not a, yeah, not a cheap book. Um, goes by mystery six by superior. Uh, okay. Yeah. Those superior books, uh, there aren't many sales of them. That's the, if you're not aware of superior, it's like a Canadian publisher. Mystery six. Here we go. I think you said yours was a five, five. Okay. So four, five sold for 1800, seven, five, double cover for 3,700, three, five for 450. Yeah. Prices are kind of all over the place. Um, I mean, I'd probably think something around two grand would be pretty reasonable for the sale price. What you might expect, you know, less than this, this seven, five, you know, you could maybe get more, but the, the thing that like, that's a big jump there. So, I mean, I think I, like if it was me, I'd probably be happy if I was able to get this kind of number, like 1800, but, um, cause that's such a huge gap for one grade point here. And, uh, so yeah, but maybe like two grand, something like that. All right. Remember, like seven years ago, I saw a crime suspense stories 2250 uh, for like 1800 bucks at a show. Yeah. One of those books, you know, it's just, it's become like the pre code horror book. There are a few of, uh, there are a few of like the pre code horror books. Uh, it's one of them. You know, you've got like Black Cat 50. Uh, what is it? Is it like Tomb of Terror 15? Um, then that Witch's Tales 25. But, yep. Isn't the story in the comic book more important than the story behind the book? Uh, not when you're talking pedigrees. Um, I mean, that that's that's where it's like you have something that it's going to have that same value as any other book in that grade for the story behind the story in the book, and then the pedigree adds something extra on top of it. It's just like it makes it like a one of, you know. That's that's one of the uh, that's one of the things that really adds to it. Is it really it makes it like that one of where it's like you have the only pedigree copy of that of that book or, or whatever it might be. And so it, it's just something extra. And when you're talking about collectors, you know, things that are like one ofs, that kind of thing, it, it, it adds a premium. <clears throat> Do you think I can sell my stolen books for three times the value of a call than this <laughs> stolen comic pedigree? Uh, maybe, you know, you could, you could try to see if you can, uh, you know, there, there are these infamous books now that if you can get a, uh, <laughs> get more for those. Um, yeah, cap three for Stanley literature. Yeah. 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 I love that cap three cover. Um, there's a non-recognized pedigree out there called the variety store collection. The books were all clipped in one corner and stamped no return Appleton's bookstore. Um, yeah. There, there actually, there are a number of books that are like these unofficial pedigrees um, that are out there. And it, it's just, I think part of it is just maybe the, I don't know what it goes, what goes into getting a pedigree through CGC, like what the process is. I'm guessing it's not simple, but there's also that whole thing where it has, it generally has to be like single owner, all that kind of stuff bought off the shelf. Uh, there are some obviously that, that it's hard to prove that, but, um, but, but yeah, I think that's generally their rules that they, they follow. And, and so like, that's why like heritage, a lot of times you'll see these books that on here, it looks like we've got some pedigrees coming up. Oh, these are promise collection ones. Uh, so heritage, they'll have these things that are, they're like heritage pedigrees where it's like the black cat collection or the I think like the Oregon coast collection. And there's a new one that they have. I can't remember what it's called um, where they put those little stickers, those circle stickers on the label. And it's because, like the black hat collection that was from, he's actually, it's a guy that's on Instagram. Uh, but, uh, it was his collection of those books, which tend of the, a lot of like pre-code horror books. And so they were just like really high grade copies, but he didn't buy them off the shelf. A lot of his were pedigrees, like of other, like other pedigree books that he had in his collection. And so he's not the original buyer. So his collection couldn't be a CGC pedigree. 
<laughs> the cap three is Bucky, the good girl. Well, the, the good girl is the, the woman that's in the canon. Um, you know, you would call it a, like a Bucky bondage cover, though, I guess is what it would be. Um, all would be considered high grade if not for the clip and stamp. Very identifiable, but low grades. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's not, it's one of those things, like if it's not an identified pedigree, not so much. It, you know, it's hard to ask for, for extra. Uh, or try to claim extra for it, especially without having the story behind it. You know, that's part of it too. Um, what are your thoughts on signatures on books? Does it add to any appeal to the book for you? Uh, it depends largely on the placement. Um, like I have a Tales to Astonish 93 that's signed by Stan Lee, where he signed it like right on the surfboard. It looks awesome. I, I think that's a, a really great one. Then you got other ones where he like, like Stanley, like, will like glob his signature on someone's face. And you're just like, oh gosh, <laughs> like, you know, like, and I know it adds value to it, but it's just like those, yeah, those, they, I mean, they take away from the visual appeal of the book. So um, yeah, a lot of it depends on placement, you know, some like, uh, who is it? Uh, like Steranko, like his placement is always incredible. His signature looks awesome. For Zeta, you know, his is rare, but his signature is incredible. You know, he makes sure he places it where it almost looks like it's part of the cover. Like there are certain people that sign or, or signed in a way that is really appealing to the cover. Then, you know, Stanley is, is not necessarily one of those people. <laughs> he just signs anywhere and it's uh, it's usually like a really thick marker and it's really globby and all that kind of stuff. Um I've noticed nine, eight on a lot of books going way for, for way more than they have any right to. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is one of the things I've noticed as one of like the trends that nine, eights, like the highest grade copies have been going for really big premiums, you, you know? And it's like when lower grades are still dropping, you're seeing those really high grade copies still selling for, for big premiums. I think CGC hurt itself and everyone else by making the difference between a nine, eight and a 10 Oh, so arbitrary. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't really say for sure, but it's, it's pretty difficult. Like it's pretty difficult to tell the difference between a nine, eight and a 10 Oh, you know, or a nine, nine. I mean, I, it's like, it's not even like one spine tick. It's like how clean the bindery cut is on the book. I mean, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I, those types of books, I've, I've talked about this before, like really high grade books that are high dollar books too. Those ones do really scare me. Um, I, I talked about that maybe in my last live where it was uh, like a one comics had gotten a Batman two fifty one in that in a submission they sent, it was like a nine, eight and a nine, eight of that book is like 40,000 or something or 35,000, but a nine, six is like, 6,000, you know, and, and I've had books in CGC cases that have been damaged inside the case. They're not damaged by CGC or anything. They're damaged, like just because the books can shift a little bit. And if it's in shipping and the book shifts or whatever, and it maybe bends a corner or whatever else, like if that book shifts in that case, the difference between a nine, eight and a nine, six is like $30,000, $25,000. And so yeah, your case still says nine, eight, but anybody looking at that book says that is not a nine, eight anymore. And so that's one of those, I don't know, it, it, this, that type of stuff makes me really nervous with like the super high grade, um, really expensive books, like, like the single nine, nine Hulk 181 that's out there. I mean, oh gosh, like I bet that book sells for like a million if it comes up for sale, if not more, because it's the sing, it's only one. And, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I'd be worried it's actually damaged and that's why it hasn't come back up for sale. Um, yeah. The history of the crimes. Yeah, I think I mentioned that. Yeah. The nine Oh that sold for 2003. <laughs> it's like, yep. Not going for that anymore. Um, there was a recent Steve Ditko ASM collection I've seen in a Facebook group that has a blue label, not a gold. Label. Yes, because that's not a pedigree. Uh, so it's just like the Nicolas Cage ones. They um, There's a difference between like a label note and a pedigree. And so the Nicolas Cage ones are not a pedigree, but they'll they'll say like from the Nicolas Cage collection. 
And so it's a note on the label that they'll make. Same thing with that Steve Ditko one. It's a note on the label. It's not a pedigree. It doesn't get the gold label. Uh, but those Steve Ditko ones sold for a lot, like multiples of what they would sell for normally. Let's see. McFarland does uh, good SIGs. Yeah, yeah, he, he is. I, I like it more when he signs his full first name instead of getting just the T, but but yeah, I agree. I know people aren't really into actors SIGs, but I have a Marvel Premiere 47, 98 signed by Paul Rudd. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's when it tends to be like really specific to the person. You know, if, if you like that actor or that kind of thing, like the ones that were signed by, um, oh, like it on names, but uh, whatever. But yeah, I, I mean, th that really is a, a very specific to that person because the you have to be careful if you're paying premiums for that uh, because your number of people that want to pay that premium for an actor signature on the book is, is much smaller. I've been, let's see. I've been advocating for 8.3 grades. <laughs> so maybe someday. Uh, can you pick up slabs in Florida instead of getting them shipped? I know you used to be able to, but I, cause I think ETA Nick would talk about it, but I don't think you can anymore. Uh, it may be different. I think they stopped during the pandemic. Um, I don't know if they've allowed it again or if that just didn't, that might be something where it ends up impeding their, uh, their process. You, you know, it's probably faster for them to just get it out and shipped and everything than to have to hold something for someone. So I, I honestly don't know. I'm not a big signature collector, but I do have some Joe Simon, uh, Jim Stranko, John Romita, Stan Lee. My prize signature is a new God signed by Jack Kirby. Yeah. The, the Jack Kirby signatures are a, a lot less common. There's a lot less of them that are, that are out there. Curious what the e eerie one will go for. I am also curious what the eerie one will go for, but I don't think I'll still be on when that one sells, but I don't know. Maybe it's coming up. Oh, it is coming up. Nine books. Where's it at right now? Okay. Yeah. It, I think it's at around 1800 right now. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one that I'll, I'll watch. So, um, wish CGC would expand a center on the West coast. Yeah. I, I mean, I honestly, I prefer that. I kind of like that. It's all in one place. Um, I'd be worried that you would end up with different grading in different places. Um, even though I know it's different people grading all the time, but I kind of like having the idea of one central facility, where you have like one head grader who kind of oversees everything, all that kind of stuff. Even though I know they're not looking at every book, they grade thousands and thousands of books a day, but just, it would make me think like, you know, if people think like one place grades easier than another, everybody will send to one place. And then it might be something that's identified by a, by the label, you know, like through the serial number. And then people will be like, Oh, I'm not going to, I don't want to buy that. If it was graded, you know, the West coast or it was graded at the East coast. I, I feel like something like that might end up happening. And, um, so, or it would be like in the labeled notes or whatever it might be. And so I, I kind of like it that it's just in one spot. Uh, would low, I would low key get ASM 121 signed by Andrew Garfield. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be the appropriate people uh, for that one. I don't know which book Tisha, I didn't win any too high for me. I don't know if you were, were you bidding on uh, Mickey, if you were bidding on anything in this one. I said, I haven't, I really haven't bid on, on this one. Only dealers can pick up at CGC. Okay. Thanks. Genuine article. Uh, so yeah, that answers that. Um, but yeah, I don't live in Florida, so I don't know. So I have the stuff, stuff shipped to me, but I do always have it shipped out directly from, uh, from my presser. So I, I like to have them spend as little time, uh, in the mail as possible. And I just want them to get graded as soon as possible after pressing, even though I, like I said, I don't think I've ever really seen the reversion on, on my books, but I wouldn't want to risk it. You know, I wouldn't want to, I just, cause like, then if it comes back to me, then I, I've got to spend the time to repackage it and send it out and all that. And I'd rather have it just all, all sent at once. Now I do, uh, when I send to my presser, I submit it to him with my CGC form already filled out. So he's sending it in 
but he's just, he's basically sending it in for me. And so it's got my form. I can still see the status updates on the books. Uh, that's, that's why even though, uh, so he offers, or he will give you the 20% discount for his, his dealer account, but I, or no, it's 15% now he'll give you the 15% discount, but I still just use my account and get the 10% because I would rather be able to see the status of the books and be able to, you know, reference back to them if I want later on, that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, so I still use my, I use my own account. So where are we at? 49. Here he was 53. All right. Let's see. What one book would you take with you to your grave? Uh, so I've, I've actually had a few people ask this question recently where they're like, what's the one book you would never sell or, you know, that kind of thing. And for me, the answer is none. Um, I, there isn't any book that can't potentially come off the list. I mean, I mean, just, I have to think about like the fact that two and a half years ago, um, I was barely into golden age, you know, and now my keepers list is dominated by golden age. Like out of the 35 books, I think like 31 of them are golden age. And, uh, and so let's see where are we at. Yeah. And, uh, and so you never know like how your tastes change over time. If there's different things you, you end up liking more or less or, or whatever. And so, um, there's nothing that I will ever say I would, I would never sell anything is, you know, right price, whatever, that kind of thing could always purchase a book for me. But I mean, that's a big number, I think for that one, I had this one at 2,500 that's at 2640 right now. So it's, I mean, it's around what I, 20, Oh, there we go. Three. Now it's at 3000. Now it's starting to climb. <laughs> All right. So if you're not familiar with this book, uh, this is like the first dedicated horror comic. Uh, this is eerie number one. And uh, it's a lower grade copy of 2.0, but this is not an easy book to find. And now 3,600. Yeah, this one's going pretty big. Definitely more than I was expecting. Uh, there was a really big sale for like a 6.5 recently. But this is a case where I think it's just like, people are just like, this is my chance to get this book and not have to pay $8,000. And so, so uh, this is a big number. It's now at 3840. Yeah. And that's, that was a really, really strong sale for that book. Um, especially because like, you know, if we look at this one, I mean, it's, it's pretty faded. So like her dress is normally red. This is red. You know, it's a, it's still like, it's a nice enough presenting copy, especially for a two O, you know, you don't have, um, any pieces missing out of the front? Let's see the back. Yeah, so this is like the red. So like this book was probably sitting like, you know, face up. And so this is what that red normally looks like on the front. But then this is what it looks like now. And so it's just, it was probably exposed to the atmosphere or light or whatever it might be. But, um, but yeah, 3840. That was a solid sale for that book. Um, let's see. Only had the only I have the only Moon Knight 399 bought for 200 up from Heritage years ago. Werewolf Black cover, no idea would be worth today. Yeah, that's the type of book where you would almost just like have to auction it. I mean, you could probably put some number on it um, and try and sell it, but to to really have an idea what it really would go for, you almost have to auction a book like that. How rare are proof copies? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. If you mean pedigree, or if you mean the file copies. Um, but I don't know what, uh, the proof copy is. Uh, would you rather one day AI be responsible for grading rather than relying on whether or not your CGC grader lost a fight with their spouse last night? Now I I've had a number of people talk about AI grading. Um, I don't know if it would work for comics and, and this is why. So with cards, AI grading, I think makes a lot of sense. You know, you've got centering, you've got a certain amount of whitening, white, whitening on corners, on edges, all that kind of stuff. And it's just one side and the other side, you know, you just flip it over camera, scan, camera, scan, done. It could be something where it's like going through a conveyor belt almost, and it could be super quick and processed pretty quick. But with a comic, a comic is not just the front and the back. The comic is the interior. And so, and, and a lot of these books, especially when you're talking about older books are fragile. 
you can't take a cover and like fold it over and push it down flat so you can get a picture. You're going to split spines. You're going to detach covers, all this kind of stuff to get the pictures that you would need to be able to assess accurately the condition of the book. Uh, so if it was just the front and the back that mattered, then yeah, I think you could potentially have something like AI grading, but like, I don't want to, I don't know if I can pull it down. Let's see. So like this, this book here, so this beyond 27, uh, this book, the front cover, this book looks like a seven, five, maybe better. Um, the back cover, you can kind of see a little bit of the tanning around the edges, but the interior is where is the reason this book got a seven or five, five, the interior has, uh, quite a bit of dark tanning on it. And so then you need to be careful handling that book when it's like that and, and seeing that interior, all that kind of stuff. And so that's where it, I, I just, I think AI for comic grading is going to be a huge challenge if, if it can ever be done just because of how you have to get those interior pictures and detach centerfolds and all this. It might be something where they're like, they, they enter, you have a person doing that and they're entering something into a form. I don't know, but um, that's where I, I think it, you could run into some problems. How long did it take you to build up to these big books? I've just gotten back into comics. Uh, for me, about uh, about four years, approximately. Um, I mean, I'm not going to pretend like it didn't cost me money to, <laughs> to, to get into the hobby, you know, and that kind of stuff. But I also, every book that I, I sell, I just end up putting back into more books. And so it just kind of goes up like that. <laughs> but four years, um, give or take. Yeah, fork. Yeah, that must have been for the uh, the the uh, eerie. Yeah, that was a big sale for that one. What books or titles have you asked been asking why anyone would collect that? I honestly like. I don't criticize anybody's collecting habits. You know, whatever people like is what they like, and you know, there, I'm sure there's lots of people that think the Golden Age stuff is dumb. <laughs> so, you know, like a lot of people, they, they'll Silver Age would be far preferred over golden age. Cause it's, you know, their favorite characters from when they were kids and things that they grew up with in the movies, all this kind of stuff. And so, um, yeah, I mean, everybody's got their own tastes. Uh, I wasn't into golden age until these, uh, I started seeing Ryan's or started seeing these, uh, videos. I used to just skip those books and auctions. Now it's <laughs> damn you, Ryan, as I'm bidding on golden age books. Yeah, you know, I've, I've kind of joked that I've kind of hurt myself maybe a little bit. It makes me harder to get some of the books I'm going after because now I have more competition out there, um, especially when I'm showing the, the heritage auction. I'm not getting to bid on any of this stuff while it's going on. But uh, let's see here. Um, gosh, now I got to find out how to block this guy. All right, he's gone. All right. Uh, is there a defect that is a deal breaker when purchasing fading coverless, et cetera? Um, I, I saw the follow on comment. Um, it depends. Yeah, it depends on the book. But generally, I I don't like big pieces missing out of the front of the cover. That's really the main thing for me. Um, if it's a certain book, I'll, I'll buy it. You know, I'll still consider it, um, but I'll want to replace it if it's like a, on a keeper type book. Um, like I bought a tech 34 and i ended up deciding to put it up for sale when originally i wasn't going to uh, because it was missing a piece on the cover and it just it bothered me um yeah i banned the uh, grandma guy <laughs> yeah meant file copies of golden age comics i mean i've never owned one um mickey actually his is a file copy so uh the one that he picked up recently that uh chamber of chills which one is yours? 21? I think it's 21. Something like that. Uh, his his is actually a file copy. So you can find them. Yeah, I don't know how to do the wrenches. Uh, you'll have to show me that, Mickey. Uh, sometime later. I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll take care of that later. But yeah, he's been like I said, he's been blocked now. 
kind of weak FF5 sale. I feel like that's another book. There's a lot of sellers right now. Yeah, I I agree. That That's one that I think you will have some opportunities to get that book. Now, if Dr. Doom shows up in the Black Panther movie, all bets may be off for that one. I don't know. That one could be tough. Um, it, it I think it would probably spike really hard and then it would tail off again until we see him again or get more information or, or that kind of thing. He could be a character that shows up in an end credit. I, I have no idea. I just know there's been talk about it. And so that's where that could be one where it's like, you'll wish you have bought it <laughs> right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Oh my gosh. I thought I blocked this guy. All right. No, oh, he keeps, I guess he keeps coming, coming back. Okay. All right. We'll see. Yeah. I've blocked him a couple times now. Let's we'll see if he comes back again. All right. Let's see what Mickey says. All right. You have to do it in YouTube, not StreamYard. Like if you open your stream in another YouTube, yeah, I almost guarantee I'll screw something up right now if I do that. So I'll, I'll definitely talk to you about that later. I'll, uh, I'll give some, some wrenches in there, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, we've, We've been on here for, for three hours now. I, I've, I've got my first, uh, this person keeps coming back. I got my, I feel like this is like my first real like hate person on here. So that's, uh, you know, take that for, for getting, you know, enough people in the chat. It's inevitable, I guess. But, um, but yeah, thanks everybody for, for joining me in this, this live stream. It's been a lot of fun. There's still, I mean, this thing, there are a ton of books up for sale tonight. I think there's still like 200 listings up tonight. Uh, so, so if you're interested in any of the books on this auction, you know, they'll, they'll be going for probably another hour and a half or so. These things, they tend to last for a while and you've got tomorrow. There's like that mystic six, that one's coming up tomorrow. Um, so, so yeah, thanks everybody for, uh, for, for joining the chat. Uh, it's been, been great. Thank you. Appreciate all the questions. It's been, been a lot of fun and hope to do this one again soon. I will, uh, I will. See you again on the next one.